So I'm going to tell you about some absolutely crazy shit. Now, I've always said that Previ, the man, the god himself, behind both Reaper, Solrest, and Bomber builds, and Bomber's Blink Arrow, Mirror Arrow, he has some absolutely godlike text for this Lee. 3.23 affliction however what we're going to be doing is play testing a little bit of a low budget approach doing a guardian variant without utilizing the league mechanics or the league specters rather when we get this up so anyways i've been leveling with this and uh, there's some pretty cool things around this, this um the, the twin gear we'll be using the gloves don't matter uh we use a gold rim uh here is bite you can get this by selling a shark tooth um a quiver together with a 1% or higher quality the split though, I think it is. It's one of the gems and the chance you can vendor recipe this at least. Um and then uh Praxis for mana, Quill Rain, and 70 steps, and we use Sid Breath. Now, the funny thing is with Sid Breath is that as we started this, I was using Blink Arrow bombarding clones, minion damage, and then I used I had a lightning damage on Ruthless. Is I, I don't know, my mind stopped working. Those two don't work. So I was actually leveling originally with a two link and it was just destroying everything. And the important part was to rush down to this for the blink camera 100% cooldown recovery rate. Once you get this, this just shits on everything. It's insane how crazy this is. And now I'm using obviously a proper four link with elemental damage with attacks and fresh meat support, which also dictates for a guardian to spec into these three. But I'll be honest, Normally with a Guardian, you get the first Ascendancy, and you shit on everything from there. This carry is level 39, I haven't even bothered doing the Ascendancy, because this is clearing faster than that of what the uh, Guardian Ascendancy would do. Which is crazy, because that one's overpowered. Now, I wanted to talk about real quick here. If you sell a Blink Arrow, or a Mirror Arrow, I believe it is, I'm going to double check, but I know you can do it with a Blink Arrow, or sorry, a Mirror Arrow... You sell that with an alteration orb, it turns into the other variant. You see this? Blink arrow, mirror arrow. I'll sell this right there. Now I have a mirror arrow of bombarding clones. But if I wanted to have the blink arrow, I'll sell this with an alteration. Now I have my blink arrow back again. Why is this so important? Well, you see... Um, Mirror Arrow of Bombarding Clones cost 7 to 10 Chaos, whereas Blink Arrow of Bombarding Clones cost 40 plus. Don't be stupid. Be smart. Okay? Anyways, hope you guys enjoy watching this lovely. Enjoy the video, and I'll catch you in Act 10. All right, so you did your little introduction there. That's great. So uh, just so <laughs> everyone is kind of on the same page, uh, this is uh, Jonathan is that Rogers. Too loud? He's one of the directors for PoE2. And you've been quite busy doing a round of interviews with many people at many events, uh, spreading the word about the features in the upcoming game that many of us are uh, All right, I'm dying to try. Time. So um, <laughs> we did an interview at ExileCon. Um, there's been a few announcements since, uh, but I've noticed that you've actually been really active on the Path of Exile 2 subreddit, answering questions of just about anyone that has one for you. It's been kind of mm -hmm. difficult for me to kind of compile all that information, so maybe I'm going to uh, ask a question that has been asked already. My goal is to ask new questions. Uh, it's just a very, very difficult task uh, because the information isn't really like there's a wiki, but even even the wiki has some info wrong. Like I actually had a question about the crafting bench being removed, yeah, uh, yeah. but apparently you've actually addressed that uh, recently on Reddit. So again, um, mm -hmm. and of course, with with all of this information, with the game still being in development, I hope people understand. Should that be in the POB uh, element your theory. best answer from what you Check can out share POB with there us um, for the high body portion, final and all that for the disclaimers. Okay, great. It's mostly so, just higher um, numbers on the gear. To, to be fair, I wanted to start with a round of the questions that I kind of put together, and mm -hmm. then I have a number of questions that I saw unanswered on Reddit, on actually just a few YouTube videos. I pulled some questions from chat. Uh, and we will pull further questions from chat uh, as we go throughout the segment. But um, yeah, so I it's my pretty guy to see if there's so any first, of those builds I to wanted about. to uh, dive uh, and talk a little bit about the last trailer that you had, which was the Mercenary mm -hmm. trailer, uh, in that you announced that you have WASD movement. And mm -hmm. I tried to kind of imagine this, like, you know, how I would 
play with it. It feels like I would, a lot of the time, not want to go exactly right or exactly left or exactly up or exactly down. And with the keyboard, it's maybe a little bit difficult to actually combine that. Now, I know some people really wanted this feature, so you're bringing it to them. But I have to imagine, is this more tailored for like a controller-style gameplay? Um, so that wasn't our initial thing. That's a good question. Honestly, it was just when I was, you know, trying out the mercenary. So it, this had been suggested in our studio a long time ago, to be to be clear, right? Like there's people, people have been saying, hey, maybe we should do this for a while. And I was kind of always on the idea that um, this is something we should try. But it never was kind of like the right moment to do it because it is quite a complicated, um, uh, quite a complicated thing to actually fully pull off. Um, and uh, then when we were doing uh, mercenary stuff, I was kind of like, okay, um, we have some of the, uh, the, the, the preconditions we needed to actually... Uh, yeah, the alchemistration buffs any minion um, that is considered so, uh, a construct. The other, and the other thing as well, of course, is, yeah, like, people in the community have been... Poison SRS are so like, no considered constructs. That's why. Um, and I wouldn't say that controller was really the first thing on my mind. It was... But, I mean, obviously, the improvements we make, I'm sure, will benefit controller. Uh, but it really was just, like, making... How can I make this class feel good? And, um... Kind of generally my feeling is, is Wait, that, you know, last feel good and that's how they went the with controller last key movement. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's kind of just one of those things that, that happened that way. Um, I don't think that the, uh, the limitation say, yeah. of having only eight directions um, with WASD is particularly a problem in practice. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to kind of just be fine, uh, just for, for me playing anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah, like, I, it, it hasn't really been an issue. And because the character always sort of looks towards... Um, uh, where your mouse is it doesn't honestly even really feel like a directional movement because um you know the character can technically kind of walk in any direction relative to where they're facing um so you end up kind of just completely forgetting the fact that it's actually a directional and um, yeah it just kind of just kind of works well since you have tried it and i guess you're probably one of the only ones who has tried it uh, are you are you a convert are you going to be a wasd enjoyer moving forward in poe2 i'm pretty sure i am yes i was actually very skeptical outside of range like my first when we, when we were talking about it i was like okay this is going to be a thing for range i don't think um uh, melee is going to be that great and actually the reason why i thought that is uh, there was this game now what was it called it was it, I, I don't think it ever actually released it was in beta um, it might have been called like Diablo Four Online or something like that mm -hmm. oh. um, from ages ago, and they oh, they had WASD uh, movement in an action RPG, and I really hated it. Um, I thought that that, uh, that that the movement felt really terrible, the combat felt terrible, um, and Sorry. so I was kind of uh, imagining that we would have the same problem with our melee. Um, but then what I found was when I actually tried that out, um, is that um, it actually felt really good and. I think the reason is because of the uh, the step attack stuff we have. Um, uh, uh, what, what that means basically is that uh, when when you uh, attack, we have different animations uh, depending on whether you're moving at the time, and also depending on whether there's a monster that's like where, where the monster is relative to you. Um, so we've got animations of the character sort of stepping forward, and uh, the, the key thing we're trying to do there is to make it so that you never uh, lose momentum um, on your character. So um, it's your like it, it feels really bad if your character just kind of comes to a stop and then attacks yeah um and so uh by adding these extra animations it allows us to make the character feel like they're kind of flowing forward and then do going into the attack um so because we have those i think it actually drastically yeah. improves how melee combat feels with the wasd and um i actually am a fan of it i think it's i think i think it feels it feels pretty damn good well, i um, guess so, i'll have to yeah, give that, it a try i was I, I mean i was yeah. skeptical as well but uh on your recommendation <laughs> i guess uh, i guess more of us will uh, perhaps be more open-minded on it um mm -hmm. now since you mentioned there's there's like a more of an active flow of combat the mercenary also has uh, in addition to the instant attacks um, something that kind of caught my eye was the attacks while moving. Um, now, the closest thing we have to this is some form of cyclone or cyclone triggering mm -hmm. other skills in Path of Exile 1. And um, with cyclone actually being a pretty poor skill otherwise, it still has this mainstay in the game just because it can be used while moving. Um, mm -hmm. Is this going to be like a full attack while moving, or is it like Cyclone-ish where you have certain movement penalties? Like, is there something you can elaborate on the on that, and so, maybe if this is something more than just what the Mercenary will have? Yeah, so um, on, on, on Rapid Shot in particular, uh, basically you just get a 50% move penalty while you're, while you're doing it. Um, so just whatever your movement speed Wait is. Wait till this is finished. Um, I mean, this uh, is one and a half shot. hour. We've got a um, question for our way, man. to feel pretty reasonable. Um, this is something that I'm keen to do more of with other skills in the game. I think it actually, um, it actually makes the pace of combat feel faster when you can sort of begin attacking before you arrive at your next uh, at your next pack, uh, or just sort of otherwise having something to do while you're retreating. Um, so I kind of quite like the feel of that, and so I'd like to do um, some of that as well. 
But I don't want to make it to the point where every skill you can just do while moving, because I think that results in very floaty combat that I don't um, really like. Um, so in particular for melee, you kind of have to um, make sure you're splitting the difference a little bit of where um, uh, you, you need to make sure, like what I, what I think can be good is that you can kind of ease into, like uh, you yeah, start an attack, and during man. the start of that attack, you've kind of got movement um, that can be controlled. And then there's kind of a part where, you, where, where, where the movement control you have uh, tones down to potentially zero for at least a little while and then back into having movement again towards the end and that kind of thing can kind of allow you to have um, uh, like the feeling of you're still able to do a lot of control even in melee um, but also I think for other ranged classes as well it can be good to have just a few options I'm um, not necessarily a lot of options but at least a few options that allow you to be done while moving uh, there's just certain things I think that can feel really good for men so um, we, we have been experimenting with other classes and other skills as well like we think there are certain skills that can really benefit from uh, that kind of thing um, so uh, yeah, it's definitely something I want to do more of. So I kind of wanted to ask this later, but I'll jump to it now since you've touched upon it. Um, one mm -hmm. thing that I feel isn't um, super cut and dry in the uh, presentations for the classes is mm -hmm. what is attributed to the class and what is attributed to the skill. Because people, when they're seeing Path of Exile 2, they often forget that... Um, I, I hope it's still true anyway, uh, that mm -hmm. skill gems are just skill gems and can be used by any class. So the idea of attacking while moving when watching like the mercenary trailer, I guess the viewer doesn't know for sure if it's something that the mercenary gets or if it's something that's attributed to the skill. Right. So the only thing that the classes actually technically get um, is the ascendancy classes that belong specifically to them, plus the starting position on the tree, right? So, um, and that's still true in PoE too. Um, it's just that whenever we're presenting uh, like content, especially when we've got a, like an audience we expect to have a lot of new players in, we kind of tend to want to keep to the stereotypes um, and kind of not like go into the that other side of things too much because I think it just confuses the issues. And really, when you're presenting a task that's to what someone, what you're kind of players. Them is some kind of vision for what type of uh, uh, what type of a character they might want to be. Um, and so that tends to be what we focus on. But of course, I mean, at the end of the day, like it is still very much my preference to have everything be um, as much as possible, like have interesting combos from other stuff. And we still have that very much like Magic the Gathering style idea of, you know, hey, you can splash from another color. There's other, you know, like use things off attribute, that, that kind of stuff. It's still very important to me. Um, so yeah, like absolutely you can use, um, all of those things are, are part of the skill and not part of the class. Uh, another aspect to this was uh, to the mercenary trailer that I was uh, quite oh, interested in. I can think of a lot in. of things that can be used uh, so players in PUE. Again, we no. don't know how much of it has to do with the general gameplay, yeah, well. but in the mercenary trailer, uh, when uh, I mean, people should watch it, uh, but when the mercenary takes on the boss at the end of the trailer, the pacing of the boss fight is, I believe, he's kind of trying to dodge attacks. He's like debuffing the boss. And then when the boss gets to about like 30, it just dies super quick. And I'm guessing it's because he's stacking up all these debuffs throughout the fight. Um, is this something more tailored towards the mercenary or is this kind of how you envision combat across the board? Um, so generally speaking, we like what, what I kind of, I guess the feeling I like to try and get is that you've got some kind of way to do it, to do really large amounts of damage but you can't always necessarily perfectly execute that because of what the boss is doing. Um, so in that particular thing, it wasn't actually that there were um, debuffs on the boss. I just managed to execute a perfect... Um, so the, the, the combo I was using there was um, uh, you use uh, Incendiary Rapid Shot, which builds up um, uh, like heat on your crossbow. Uh, and then with that, then when, when you fire a grenade, the grenades get extra fire damage on them um, uh, based on how much heat there was on the crossbow. Um, and then uh, you can then use uh, Incendiary uh, Power Shot to detonate those grenades, so I just kind of managed to get all the grenades in the right place and um, get the. Uh, and, and I get like the, that you're uh, rewarded like for skillful play. At the time, at that exact that's moment, what and that's why I did really like good. a really large amount of damage. Right what we played at least. Um, but in order to be able to get that, you need to be able to use um, rapid shot for enough time without having interruption to build up the heat and that kind of thing. So it's just a matter of kind of, of getting that um, sorted out. Um, and um, I think uh, there, and that, there also might have been something to do with the baby um, uh, going on there. I, I can't remember the exact thing around that. But um, yeah, it, uh, it, the boss bosses can go down very quickly if you know how to execute. And actually, an interesting thing with that is that the first time um, with that with the mercenary setup that we had for that trailer that I played the boss, um, that, that I killed it, it actually took me five minutes. And I said to Mark, hey man, what's up with this boss fight? Like, you know, that's taking way too long. Like, what are we doing here? And he's like, what are you talking about? It takes me like one minute at most. Like, you, you must be terrible. And then I tried it again immediately. <laughs> 
And then the next time I played it, um, it took me two minutes without like me really realizing that I had particularly learned anything. Um, so it actually turns out that um, you know we, w w it doesn't actually take long to learn the mechanics of the boss. And once you know them, the degree of, uh, of, of of increase in, in in damage you can deal is so much higher. And that's because once you've learned the mechanics of the boss, the boss isn't disrupting you quite as much because you kind of mm -hmm. know what to expect. And that allows you to kind of build up those various combos that let you execute um, large amounts of damage. So, um, yeah, that's kind of what happened there. And so now, of course, like it's actually another another case ahead of that was the um, uh, the blind beast. I was I was doing this demo um, of with the druid and the blind beast just again and again and again and again. The, the beginning, I was taking me like you know three, four, five minutes to uh, kill that boss fight. And then by the time that I actually recorded the one that I think went online. Um, it was done in like frickin' 30 seconds or something like that, and it was literally just from just playing the boss again and again, so, uh, you know, it is sort of impressive how uh, learning the mechanics does actually make you better at the game. As a, as a follow-up question, since you since you mentioned that this, ide this idea of figuring out where the DPS windows are and being able to properly <laughs> execute your combos resulting in, like, multi- you know, I really like the idea that uh, what they're going with this, because uh, I mean, what they're trying to achieve with Bui 2, and which is very clear when we play tested this at Exocon as well, the whole idea of it is to uh, basically reward players for playing the game in a better way. Your your skills matter for your for your performance. So he's talking about is it, like you know placing the things in a. a proper position allowed him to do more damage learning the mechanics of the boss allowed him to make sure that he could execute the whatever rotation if you will was necessary for optimal damage output rather than you just pressing one button to do all the damage that's one of the things that made pv2 at least the the version that we got to play at exocon very enjoyable multiples more damage um is that perhaps something that might be a bit difficult to tune with multiplayer like if you had like a two-player party and you just had a really tanky friend keeping the boss perfectly still, wouldn't that, in a sense, make it much easier? It can do, but um, there are various factors. So um, a lot of the um, the crowd control type uh, mechanics um, have uh, things built. So for example, freeze, right? If you freeze a boss, then the next freeze takes longer. Uh, that, that's like a thing that kind of cools off over time. But effectively, like the more party members you have, um, there's kind of this like, uh, like the various systems that work sort of like how poise works all respond to that um so that kind of means that um you know someone sitting there stunning the monster um is gonna if you've got like multiple people, do, people doing that it's going to um uh, get harder to sort of crowd control the boss over time um and then it should sort of come out to be relatively similar um once you've reached the steady state as it were um versus having um a single player once you take into account the you know amount of uh of, of, of um increase in life and all that other sort of stuff so we kind of have to get that tuned exactly right which i can't say we've done a huge amount of tuning so far on honestly because we still need to do a bunch of work there uh, but ideally the, the intention is kind of get it to the point where it sort of feels a little bit similar but but of course there has to be room for synergy between um you know between characters right and we, yeah. we definitely build that in as well but um yeah it will ideally you're not just going to completely trivialize the boss just because you've got a couple of extra players in your party um, the uh, it's still intended. I mean, we've always striped, striven for like here, here it's just as good in single player as it is in multiplayer. Like making sure the balance. But is I don't think it. you'll like it very All right. much. Um, now this is kind of where I meant to ask the question, but I guess I'll, I'll elaborate. Uh, I was still really curious what pushes a skill and how much of a role the ascendancies have to do with it. Um, again, we've seen the druid interpreted in other games where it is very much the well, class okay. that is yeah. like. You know, in other games, there's no other shape-shifting class. If you want to play a shapeshifter, right. you play the druid. Now, in PoE 2, I imagine the shape-shifting part is a skill gem that Correct. other classes can use. So what makes the druid more of a druid? How much does the ascendancy have to do with it? Is it kind of in a way where it's like PoE 1, where they're just slightly better at it? Um, so when we're doing ascendancy classes as well, it's another one of those cases where we try to make it so that um, the ascendancy classes can be relevant for builds, even when you wouldn't think so. So intent, like what we try to do is like, you know, you've got an ascendancy class, if you look at it and what it's called and what it obviously looks like it should be doing, it is clearly going to be good at doing, you know, what you expect the ascendancy class is going to be going to be doing. But at the same time, we try to sort of word all the stats so that they don't technically require you know, that you're actually using shapeshift forms, for example. You know, they just happen to be very good at the things that shapeshift forms happen to do, and, you know, and, and you sort of look at it that way. But we do want to make it so that absolutely you should be able to play, you know, a shapeshifting duelist or something like that. You know, it can be something that, that, that we want to have scope for, even if it isn't necessarily common or the most obvious thing to do. 
Um, but it's something we've always, you know, like to try and make it so you 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 can do that. You know what I mean? All right. Um, so yeah. you guys put out the date for the PoE two beta. I believe it's in mm -hmm. early June, and this mm -hmm. is going to be a pretty pretty big milestone. I kind of wanted mm -hmm. to ask a pretty broad and general question, and I have no idea what to expect for a reply because I'm sure there's still a lot of things in the work. But what can people expect out of this beta? Like, are we going to see the whole game up until the point where it's developed, or are we just going to have kind of like a shareware limited act version like we've seen from more recent titles? Um, so with the plan is the whole game, but obviously, you know, we're not necessarily going to finish everything. Um, I don't think that the entire end game will be there. Like, we're sort of planning probably around like 60 maps as like a sort of starting point um, for, uh, for the end game. Um, there will be a couple of other in-game uh, systems in there as well, um, but I obviously don't really want to talk too much about them uh, right now. Um, but uh, it, the, we really do need to make sure that it's the whole like uh, campaign at the very least, and, and, and maps as well, just so that we can actually do progression testing, because if we can't test the whole game, we're kind of not really learning anything on that economic front, and I think that is one of the more important things we can get out of the beta, and making sure that um, there's nothing too kind of like... Uh, I, I don't know, like nothing that's like breaking the game too hard because um, d during beta, obviously once you're out of beta, right, like we can never remove items or really, you know, like like they, they have to exist forever at that point, right? So we want to make sure that um, everything's good there. But, you know, making sure that the, the progression is good and all that stuff really just requires the whole the whole game to kind of be there. Um, so yeah, it won't be like all content, but it will be, um, you know, like not, not especially not an end game, but it will be a very sizable amount of it. And... Um, uh, there might be like a couple of classes that we can't initially do. Um, mm -hmm. I'm hoping we can do all of them, but we'll sort of see where we get to with that. Um, but it should be most of them at the very least. And um, yeah, I, honestly, like I, sh I should hope that anyone who's in the beta would see it as a game that is like fully, like has full quality and and as big or bigger than any other kind of action RPG title that you would get. That you would get. Well, that's great. Um, that sounds very going ambitious. Through I like that. the different places on the internet where people are talking about PoE2, the players that don't already play PoE1, their main concern has to do with Path of Exile in general as a genre being a bit complex. And with right. new, <laughs> new game releases generally trying to at least touch upon broad appeal, um, is there some things that PoE2 is tackling differently than PoE1 to kind of grab the attention of some prospective players? Um, so I think that, like, this is kind of one of those really complicated ones because um, it is very important to us that we never dumb the game down to the extent that, you know, you won't be able to do all the interesting stuff that we're known for. Um, but at the same time, we do obviously understand the fact that, you know, we're known as a very complicated game. And I think it's sort of interesting because there are certain things about that. Like, so I've actually been talking a lot, of, a lot recently with uh, people on the team about this and, like, what we can do to kind of improve things. Um, and I think there's kind of a mix um, of factors. Um, so, um, on the one hand, you've got stuff that we've already kind of like announced that we're power fixing and stuff like this, the way the skill system works, I think is just like way better for new players. This kind of thing is, is just True. a straight up improvement. Um, but I think that, uh, there, there are things like, um, like when there was a recent conversation on Reddit as well about the skill tree and, you know, what we're doing about it. And I think a lot of people, um, uh, I think there's a lot of subtlety with it because it's like people, are, a lot of people are like, oh, you should just have like, you know, free respects all the time so that it's just easy. And if you make a mistake, it's no problem. This kind of thing. And I, I kind of look at that and I'm like... I don't know that that's really necessarily going to solve the problem. I think, like, we've kind of got this issue of, like, trying to communicate information in a both succinct way so it doesn't kind of scare people off, but also enough information you actually sort of get everything. Um, so I've been looking into ways... Okay, so I, I like where he's going with this. The, the, basically, what he's trying to say is that he's looking at a position where they don't want to give people a bunch of respects because they think that it's better to provide the necessary information that people require to make, you know, solid, sound choices for the build's progression. The problem with that is the same problem I have with the written guides I make. It doesn't matter if the information is there. People won't fucking read. And because they won't fucking read the guides... It doesn't matter if the information is there or not. People will still make the mistakes. People will still be brain dead. And the other part to this is that for information that he's talking about to be actually accurate and be useful, all of the information available that's necessary to understand what a player can do to scale or not scale, the kind of builder play needs to exist. 
Look at minions. How many people haven't asked me at least 50 to 30, between 50 and 260,000 times every league whether or not fire damage scales SRS because it's fire tagged. Like shit like that exists in the game. And that's a problem. It's a massive problem. So whether or not they're going to know if this or that modifier scales the damage, in the, like, they're not going to provide that information. If they did, you, they would basically be having a little guide section in game that's literally 3.6, maybe 3.7 Bibles long book uh, where that they need to read before they can understand what to spec their next point to level up in. Like now, no, I think that free respect is a very healthy way to allow people to play around and test things as well as having more information up to a certain level or at least a certain point of the campaign. Recently, but how we can kind of do that. Um, That's and, my take uh, on it. I think that, um, like, I mean, this is like a feature that we've just been proposing recently but and kind of haven't actually gone any way towards implementing Well, the plus yet, one fire about, like, is sort of when you go to allocate level of the gem, tree, that it's more which scales the minion. Not the skills that you have equipped would actually be affected by it. Um, like this kind of thing, like we've been discussing sort That's of like you know, what are the sense. common pitfalls um, that right. people are going to run into. Uh, but the other thing as well is that we're planning on just doing some straight up usability testing. Um, we've got like uh, in the future, we've got a uh, usability lab. Infinite does it rather well, kind of, like, actually. Yeah, completely just like players that are off the street and just kind of see, you know, like how they respond to things. Like, do they understand things? Um, so you know, th there's a lot we can do here, and it is going to be a focus. But at the same time, I just don't want people to hear from that the idea that oh, you know, we're just going to make the game, we're just going to dumb it down. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it is yeah. really important that we not do that. Well, that's good to hear. Um, I was browsing the wiki, because there is a PoE2 wiki, it's kind of just a list of information, and I'm sure, again, some of it, uh, uh, not necessarily outdated as far as the public knows, but perhaps you'd like to touch upon the subject, because uh, we're bringing it up again. Um, one thing that uh, PoE uh, has gotten some attention for is kind of like the instant logout that's especially used by hardcore players. <laughs> On the wiki, I found that there is set to be a two and a half second cast time for opening portals mid-combat and taking uh, damage will just, interrupt it? It is actually just in boss fights. Um, you can do oh, okay. it uh, instantly when you're um, not uh, in a boss fight. Um, but yes, the idea is to actually prevent you from, from, from doing that, right? Like we want You want you to actually have to um, to actually fight the boss and be able to kill it in, in one go, ideally. Um, or maybe that there's a few points in the boss fight where, you know, where you would be able to take the opportunity. But the key thing is there's still some skill there. It's not just, you know... Um, uh, Dude, it's a matter of like, you know, Pravi, this is this is disgusting. Like actually disgusting. Is that Jonathan? Yes, tomorrow we're having Jonathan Rogers and we're having Mark joining us. Like go and go on the podcast that, tomorrow. You know, kind of so you try to find the window where you can cast Pravi, your you might actually make me start playing Bama. And, you know, kind of maybe make a quick change. But if you, my, my understanding, and I think well, this you might case actually for the demo make me play this year. If if you die, the boss encounter does reset, right? Correct. Okay. It's that cool. And uh, I've also learned again on the wiki. So again, I'm not sure if this is current, but uh, <laughs> apparently you can pause during solo play. Is that right? You can. Yep, you can. Do you see this as potentially being abused by hardcore players pausing in a moment where they for sure will know they'll die and they'll just wait for like the next patch cycle or hotfix to like reset their character's position? <laughs> um, so you can always log out and reset the boss fight whenever you want, right? Like you, you're not going to... We, if you ult F4 ultimately, you, that ends the boss fight, right? Because... Oh, okay. um, yeah, because, because you can log back in and, and start from scratch. But the key thing you can't do is just whittle the boss down, like one, you know, like, like log out, go back to town, heal, go back to the boss, and I then see. continue from scratch. You know what I mean? So, like, it is it is actually, I mean, maybe okay isn't the word, but, you know, it is it is, it is, it is a thing you can do to alt F4 from a, from a boss fight to prevent, um, to prevent your death. And I think that that is something that um, there is really no... Uh, solution for if it even honestly needs solving um like it's just it's but, but because now but, but in poe one the cost wasn't high enough right because like you just you know you just go back and, and take continue the boss right from where you left off if you like you still have to be able to kill the boss in one you know in one go if you know what i mean yeah. uh, in, in poe two, which was not the case before so um and this actually by the way is something that we have to be really careful about because it means that um bosses that are progression blocking can be actually progression blocking right like you know, like if that if you can't kill it, you just can't continue the game in some cases, right? If it's an act loss or something like that. So 
True. Um, you know, there's, there's people have to get good in some cases, mm. but also we have to just be really careful that those progression blocking bosses don't, uh, you know, completely alienate people as well. With that in mind, I'm actually uh, well, playing so a pretty uh, is, is three months, man. Like a deep. one campaign Indeed. per character type of thing, or will you be able to like have multiple characters to kind of help with the bosses along to kind of alleviate the progression? Uh, so, so, sorry, I'm not quite sure what you mean about that. But, I mean, you you do you will have to complete the campaign on each um, on each on each uh, character. Okay. But well, you, can you, always, but you can always silver? like yeah, Aren't I? just like in POE one, right? Like, there's, there's things you can do to rush another character through, you know, like quickly. If you right. Want no, I was thinking like if yeah. if you had a character that really wasn't good at all against a certain boss, could you? get your other character to kill it for Oh, that I one. see what you mean. No, no, no. So yeah, it doesn't work like that. It, work, it just it basically works like Pay one and that's for good. Okay. Yeah. Although, mm. interestingly, well, I, no, actually, scratch that. <laughs> I was about to say something I realized we haven't announced it yet. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, I have I have a, maybe a difficult question for you, but um, around the time we got Ruthless, we started hearing some of the news for PoE2, and a lot of it mm -hmm. kind of matched up. Uh, and we'll talk about the, the, the crafting bench and all that being removed. Just right kind of similar features in a way. Uh, Ruthless in PoE1 has seen kind of like lukewarm popularity. Uh, personally, I really like it. Um, I think it's maybe a touch more ruthless than I would like. But I mean, I like I'm agree. playing, I'm playing non-ruthless this league. And right. so far this league, I've found about 30,000 alteration orbs. To where I don't even bother using yep. an augmentation yep. orb yep. because it takes yep. too much time yep. to click it back yep. and forth, yep. right? So obviously the answer is somewhere in between the two. But I agree. how how are you designing the kind of the, the pacing of the game and the abundance of currencies and items and all that? Mm -hmm. What has the goal changed seeing Ruthless not like explode in popularity, I guess is my question. So there's a lot to talk about here, like a lot. Um, um, so, uh, I, I guess any of those first thing bullets, with Ruthless is, I think uh, Ruthless yeah. did definitely go too far. And more to the point, I actually think Ruthless bundled in too many things in one go. go. I think if Ruthless had just oh, been yeah. item drop changes and hadn't done a lot of other things that Ruthless did, like for example, crafting bench removal and uh, the movement skill stuff and like a bunch of other that stuff, I think it actually would have gone down a lot better. And I also think as well that um, there probably wasn't enough attention paid to map sustain um and a few other details like that um uh, like in particular i think one of the major philosophical things we did learn from ruthless is is that we need to make sure not to um reduce the uh, access to content um being a big thing like i think that ruthless did make it too hard to get access to content um and also like probably the currency was a bit too rare there's like various things about that um that, that were just i think not quite right um uh, but also, and I'd love to fix those in Ruthless, honestly, but the problem with that is is that whenever we say, hey, we're doing a bunch of Ruthless stuff to improve it, we just kind of get a lot of money while you're working on Ruthless, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so I don't think that like, the ship has kind of sailed there, unfortunately, um, which is a bit of a shame, uh, which isn't to say we won't ever address it, but um, I think uh, we at least learned a lot from Ruthless to, to help um, there. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's one, one side. He's not, he's not but, wrong, um, though. That's the, the point, The next side right? of things, I guess, just comes into all the general yeah, it's philosophy the video. Of, um, how item drops should be um, you know, should, should be done in PoE 2. <laughs> and um, I think everyone could agree, can agree that we definitely need to fix the fact that the amount of shit... So for those of you who missed it, tomorrow we're going to have Mark and Jonathan Rogers on uh, the podcast I launched together with Darth Micah Transaction. So both Mark and Jonathan will be joining us. And then you'll find that on my YouTube channel later. Um, so definitely check that out. So I, I was going to make some time to watch... Um, to watch the video for Crips video. I just haven't had the time with the holidays. So I decided to do it now rather than after the stream. I'll probably have to re-watch it anyways one more time after the stream. But uh, I figured I was going to watch it with you guys today. Or listen to it rather so I can play at the same time. And some of you guys have already seen it. Um, Shamar, uh, what time? Type exclamation mark podcast. Um, 21.30 p.m. CET. Um, so that's happening. And uh, I'm very excited for it. And uh, we've already listed some questions. The thing is, it's going to be the same structure of questions that we have with uh, with the Tavern Talk podcast that we already have, which essentially is that it's going to be a very lean back, chill podcast where we don't really have any structure to it. It's just going to see where the conversation goes. Uh, and because we have that kind of structure, we always have like a couple of backup questions. And we did tackle that earlier with the chat today. Might do another batch. Uh, with you guys today as well before they end the stream 
And the idea is to have a couple backup questions in case we uh, the conversations run stale or um, or we get the uh, derail away from the actual topic, which is PUE2. So that's the plan, at least. So for now, we're just going to listen in on this. Get on the screen is so high that, I mean, like, okay, so random thing. Mark, Mark was decided that what he was going to do this league in PUE1 was play the, like, ultra ridiculous item finding strategies. You know, oh. he's never actually done the, like, full on crazy strategies before. Uh, and one of the things he ran into um, was the fact that when you have um, you get to a certain point, you can't even press alt anymore. That damage, I've been using this, which didn't do shit because of this. I was using added lightning, which didn't do shit because of this. You're telling me that damage was actually just a two link? I just realized. Oh my god, dude, this is insane anymore um because the uh game client will take so long to um have all of the uh, pop-ups appear on screen that you get disconnected from the uh from the server <laughs> um so uh that's not so good uh there's <laughs> really there's definitely some problems there um so yeah that's obviously the other side of the extreme but i guess i guess i'm interested to actually hear your question about this because th this was an interesting one is uh what do you think should be the difference uh, in, in, in amount of value that say an average like let's say 50th percentile player gets versus a 99th percentile player like i'm interested to hear what kind of multiplier you believe this is what was up on reddit he said a thousand right um jonathan that is just just it's really, you know, like a board, it's really tough uh, I, I i don't know um I, I quite like the rootless economy i quite like it because everything has significance and everything has significance um like sure. After playing Ruthless quite a lot for like two, three weeks, I start to have an overabundance of transmutation orbs, right? Mm -hmm. So that's when they start losing their value. Um, mm -hmm. I feel that's honestly a good point to be at, you know, when a currency that's fairly regularly dropping becomes worthless being like two weeks for a hardcore player in. Just everything kind of mattering is one of the really big appeals for Ruthless for me. Um, I feel like the conversation of the average player versus, you know, the top 1% player kind of gets lost in trade league because Even people Rice are really build? good at uh, No, this is Previ's build, but uh, we made a Guardian variant where we kept the budget down to a hilariously low budget. I saw Rice was playing a Guardian variant. It's, um, I'm not sure, I'm guessing the trees are ending up pretty similar to one another, I'm guessing. But, uh... We made some changes compared to what, no, made changes to what Rice was reusing. Um, not really sure where we're gonna land with this in the end, though. That we should level. It's bad, but no, I wouldn't say that it's Rice fill. It's more like Prevy, and then um, making some adjustments from there, essentially. Using flesh offering? No, we're gonna go spirit offering. We're gonna go crit. Was not was Rise not using spirit offering? Pretty sure all of us are using spirit offering, including him, right? There is. I need a blue socket for that one now. Oh, why can't I socket? Oh, because I don't have ends. But I do in this. And. I'm baffled by this at the moment. Okay. Any blue sock, by the way. Was bomb a blink arrow mirror arrow? Mm, if I'm gonna put out a guide, uh, potentially, probably not. No, not early on, at least. Because uh, the way the way Prevy has his build set up only works in this league, and that's not something I'll put a guide out for. Now, I wonder if you really need this. Because I don't think you need this, I'll be honest. But whatever. Uh, let's see. I'm looking for something. Oh, I had seven Lee. What the fuck? Didn't even know I had that. Um, what am I looking for? Sockets, right, sorry. Um, put that up there and get some more blues. Alright, I'm just going to keep listening in on this. 
manipulating the economy or people are really good to play in parties efficiently where that <laughs> right, right. model gets completely destroyed so i i really hesitate to give an answer in, in numbers there I think, it's, I think i think you still need to have a reasonably large disparity between like average like 50th percentile and 99th percentile because that's kind of the thing that you're striving for a lot of the time is increasing your drop rate give me a second and um so i actually think that one of the issues is um so th then the other th question is al alongside this to kind of let's establish some constants here right so i would say and this may seem like a high number but i think that you need a difference of a thousand times between the best player and the average player of amount of wealth acquisition. So that isn't the same number of items, I'm saying like value of the stuff that you're getting. And that's so that you've got something to strive for, right? Like you need that level of like, of, of disparity from the bottom to the top um, to kind of to kind of make it actually, like like to actually give some form of feeling of like, I'm getting better at this game, I'm improving, you know, what I'm doing. So um, I don't know if that, does that number seem high or low to you? Like, what do you reckon? How does that feel to uh, you? It's, you know, if you're considering the trading prowess of market geniuses, then it doesn't seem high. If we're talking right, right, about right. efficient play with stacking the right mechanics and multipliers, that does seem very high. So right, I, right. I just okay, don't so know what we're talking about exactly. Sure, sure. I think we're just talking about like let's let's just say the let's let's say from the the a map that you're running when you're yeah as I said you're an average player running a map versus the absolute max mega juiced crazy map. You oh, know what I, I mean see. like in terms of the amount of wealth coming from it. And so as I said, that may seem high, but actually I think you do need those kinds of numbers to achieve that. So then the next question is okay, well, how many more items can you actually drop on the ground from like from from one to the other to actually feel reasonable? And I think that number is kind of not really more than two x. Like, mm -hmm. maybe it's a little bit more than that, but the thing is, like, on the actual ground, you probably don't want to see oh, more than double the number of items from one to the other. And yet you need to feed, and you need to actually be receiving a thousand times the value. So if we kind of break that down, I mean, like, so the, 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 there's a few things that go into this. So one, one question is, and, and, and this sort of matters, is that efficiency of your build comes into it. Like, how fast can you do a map? Because that does, that, that does come into the kind of, like, 1,000 uh, num number. So... Like, if, for example, um, you, the difference between a, an average player and a 1% and a, and a player Thank you, is, um, like, 10x in, like, speed of playing a map. So, like, you know, so if a, a bad player can do a map in 20 minutes and it takes a good player two minutes, for example, um, mm -hmm. um, to do, then you've already kind of divided that by 10, which means that the actual items on the ground have to be 100 times more valuable per map. And I think that probably sounds like something that seems within the realm of reasonableness, I would hope. Uh, I uh, see. Yep. Okay. But then the next thing as well is that if if the if the amount of items on the actual ground per month, guys, if you want to make, if you want to have this gem, you buy the mirror arrow of bombarding clones, you sell it to the vendor with one alteration, and you turn it into a blink arrow. This is selling for right now, fucking a div with twenty percent quality. Take away the quality, we're looking at. 20 to 65 cares 65 see this is ridiculous don't pay that price no, don't pay that price literally buy a mirror arrow sell to the vendor 5c once you kill is only 2x higher um then that means you've got like 50 you have to be able to have um like uh increase of rarity be worth 50 times right so basically you have to be able to increase the value of items on the ground by 50 times uh by just with just like rarity bonuses alone and it needs to feel 50 times more as well it's not enough to just be like in theory i kind of know that this is more valuable it has to really feel like you're getting 50 times more wealth well you i actually are. had a question later on about magic finding. magic find in poe2 uh now sure. if i had to ask this question a month ago um you know i would basically say yeah the rarity quantity quantity system works out pretty well but I don't know if you've played much this league, but the wisps that you can generate, yeah, know, and you can generate crazy. a lot of them, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. have their own effective quantity and rarity multipliers. And it's maybe one of the mm -hmm. first times we've seen such large rarity multipliers with right. such large quantity multipliers. And it does actually seem a little problematic uh, with hey, the I amount agree, of loot. I agree. So wh agree. what kind of systems um, may we expect with Magic Find and PoE2? Yeah, so what I think that we need to do um, is that uh, the way that rarity works in PoE1, uh, one of the issues... With yeah, there's a there's a div card that gives Mirror Arrow as well, but we're talking about the trans gem. The div card doesn't give the trans gem version. As it saturates uh, quickly, 
and also currency is not part of it and also there's no kind of understanding of the of, of well, there's various other factors of value so i don't want to go too much into the exact details of this but effectively what we have to make sure of is that the we have the ability to scale value of things on the ground with a single number and for that to work for all types of items that monsters can drop in a good way so that you actually feel like you're getting more we don't just sort of yeah that's what i was saying not these. I, I don't know if you know what i mean by that but effectively you can you can get rarity to the point where no white items drop and only blue items drop and then you can go from there to the only res drop and then you can go from there to the only unique drop like that's possible with the way that poe one's rarity system works um but um we need to sort of change this so that it works better so that you can actually get uh, higher values of rarity without kind of making it so that you kind of get um uh, the saturation and the reason why kind of more quantity is necessary in poe one is because uh more rarity if we like if we changed all thank sources you, of Rass, quantity to be rarity you. in poe one thank you everything would just be unique and you wouldn't get any more currency and it kind of wouldn't be like that's not value in the right way if you know what i mean yeah because um, unique to shit. Uh, so, so if, effectively we need to we need to improve the way the item drops work in order to make it so that yeah as i said the goal would be you get like a ridiculous amount of juice you see twice as many items on the ground but you feel like you're getting but but the, each item is on average 50 times more valuable than if you didn't do that and um then uh since you're 10 times faster at playing the game than other people the end result of that is 1000 times more wealth acquisition <laughs> if you know what i mean um so that's kind of my view on sort of how this would work and we basically just have to get to the point where that can be the case um so uh, yeah we, we have a lot of changes in mind already um i don't necessarily want to talk about the exact specifics of all of them but that's my thinking at least around how it should be um on, on a high level if you know what i mean um i saw a number of people asking in in chat when you were talking um i think a lot of people are wondering if the find more stuff uh, skill gem quality oh. skill gem quality is uh you can flip the active skill gems. You cannot flip. You cannot flip. Um, um, you cannot flip the active skill uh, skill gem. Sorry, but you can flip support gems only. Part of the game is going to be a stat on your gear. I think that's that's <clears throat> something people are quite curious about. Whether or not there's magic find. Yeah, I mean, we we definitely want to have magic find still in the game. It's the thing you can get. Okay. And, and you're basically sacrificing character power for it, like you do in sure, POE1. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Should, that should work basically the same. Okay. Um, so I was going to ask about the crafting bench being removed, but you mentioned recently uh, to a Reddit reply that it is not, it's no longer going to be removed. Um, yeah. And I, I kind of maybe wanted to ask more of a, a broad question. One part about Path of Exile 1 I really like is knowing that I can kind of guarantee some like kind of like big parts to making a character when like a new league starts and yeah. in in what in one end it can be um something like knowing that i can have access to a trigger craft on like a wand for a character like mm -hmm. that and in other cases it can be like while i might not be able to find a tier zero unique but uh, for example, divination cards kind of offer this fragmented consistency of slowly knowing that you'll eventually get this one item. Um, so is is there going to be an element of that in, in PoE 2? And maybe you can... I know some of the details are still getting worked out, but maybe some of your goals for the crafting bench Jesus, the, the have speed we just got. set your mind. <laughs> that be. Um, yeah, so the crafting bench absolutely needs to exist for exactly this reason. You should be able to at least get some certainty um, if you know what you're doing, of being able to um, fix issues with your build, you know, even if you don't find, it, you, you, don't, you don't get lucky, you still are able to sort of do something about that. Um, so I think that's really important. Um, so I think the crafting bench um, is, is good for that, and um, we do have a plan for what we're going to be doing to sort of make that work. Um, um, as for divination cards, um, it's sort of interesting. Um, I want to get rid of them. Divination cards, like. I really like them in theory. I like, I really do. And in SSF, I think they work really well. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem with target farming is that you effectively, when you have an economy, effectively what you're always going to target farm is whatever has the most value um, in the economy. Even if that's not the thing you actually want for yourself, you're just going to be like, okay, here's the thing that's going to have the most trade value, like per, per hour played and on average. Um, so therefore I just play that. So I think that the way that um that works in poe1 with div cards is not so great it sort of means that um 
uh, the people. I'm just going to pause there. I don't agree with this at all. It doesn't matter if div cards are there or not. People will still do that. People will still focus farm whatever is the most profitable to farm. Just because that happens to, in many cases, be div cards, that's a different story. But you will still see in an ARP fucking G, people will play whatever is the most profitable in a trade league so they can buy whatever they want. That's that's how the game uh, ARPG games will be played. I mean, that doesn't matter if div cards are there or not. Yeah, there will always be a profit farmable meta. That's just gonna be, that's just the way it is. The problem with div cards is that you have stacked decks. And the fact that you can get access to uber, 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 uber bosses way before anyone in a league has even gotten to maps because of stacked decks. That is a problem, if you ask me. That's the issue. It has very little to do with, oh, it's going to be the best way to farm for wealth. You can farm end game boss specific loot table items from div cards. That's a problem. That's well, my problem with it. The people who want to get the most economic value just end up farming one mass forever and ever and ever. Crimson prison gang is, that, is what they're called, the apparently. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, that's a problem. Um, so I don't have an immediate solution to that. Um, there's been various solutions proposed. Um, like, I mean, basically changing the way that div cards work. Um, I, I think, as I said, and I think in SSF, they, it's, it's cool. Um, I like it. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, we, we need to do something different, I think, here. Um, so uh, yeah, there'll, 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 there'll be some discussion about that. Um, but uh, I do think div cards are cool. Um, I'd like to see them come back in PoE too. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll find a way, um, I suspect, to make that happen. Um, but I don't know if they're necessarily going to work exactly the same mechanically as they do now. Okay. Um, I've uh, been scouring the internet for all the PoE2 news, uh, and that's included all your recent PoE2 interviews. And there was an interview you did at PAX West where uh, you were asked uh, what league mechanics are going to be ported over, at least roughly, from PoE1 into PoE2. And mm -hmm. your answer was, um, it kind of almost depends on which league mechanics you like. And it killed me that there was no follow-up question. So what PoE1 league mechanics do you like? Okay, well, I um, am a big fan of Delph. Okay. Uh, and Incursion. Uh, I definitely, those are two of my favorites, part, 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 partly because um, I just enjoyed development of them. Like, they were just really cool and thematic. I really enjoyed them. Um, but, I mean, there's lots of other mechanics that are just usually, um, uh, you know, that, that are very popular with players. Like, like Ultimatum and things like that. You know, these are, these, mm -hmm. are, these are great. I mean, I, I love Ultimatum too, but, um, you know, like, they're, 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 they're certain crowd favorites for sure. Um, you know, uh, uh, Incursion. Um, sorry, I already said that one. Um, let me think about other ones. What are my favorites in there? Um, they, they don't have to be NPOE too. This is a non-commit, no, yeah, yeah, no commit answer enough. here. I'm just trying to think. I'm just trying to think of like what are my other favorite ones. I mean, I, I, have, I mean, uh, Breach obviously. You know, Breach was one of the earliest leagues that I really felt there was just something really. Like, I feel like because what was before Breach? There wasn't really that many good ones before. Legion, there, right? I think, was before Breach. Mm -hmm. Was Legion before Breach? Life yes. His right hand. Surely not. Death no, no fucking way. No, 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 no. There, there is no way. There is no way. Pee Le Pee Legion League. Pee Breach League. 2.5. And 3.7. There are years between them. Jesus. <laughs> I have maybe maybe I'm just wrong no. about that. Oh, but hey, apparently but, I'm uh, wrong about that. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because <laughs> right, right. I'm also in the um, boat of Breach being among yeah, yeah. the first anyway, um, really uh, Bre good Bre Breach, leagues. Breach, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of. There's a few things like Delirium is pretty cool. Like, there's, there's definitely some cool things like that. Um, Delirium. Uh, generally speaking, oh. though, a lot of the leagues that are my favorite ones are the ones which involve. And I know this is kind of to be a bit um, in the community. Uh, people um, have different opinions about this. Um, but I do particularly like the ones that involve there's some being some kind of map that has interesting mechanics on it, and you go out and you do stuff on it, uh, which is why I particularly like um, uh, things like Delve. 
-hmm. But I know in the community, a lot of people prefer leagues that are inside um, you know, an area. Now, we're, we're going to have to tell Jonathan that we're, we're not going to be able to do this podcast with him. He's a, he's a delve enjoyer. Ugh. A delve enjoyer? I can't have that on stream. God damn. Now, we're going to have to cancel it, boys. I'm sorry. It's over. It's over. Um, so uh, we tend to try to have a mix. Um, but, uh, you know, I like when it, when it comes to designing leagues, my favorite way to do it is kind of look at other Didn't games even know. and be like, okay, what are some interesting, like other games from completely different genres and be like, how can we do some of the interesting gameplay from one of these and make it into a POV they league? Should so stack, that's kind yes. of what I, I most yeah. enjoy. Um, and so I was kind of one of the people who really enjoyed things like Harvest, even though, um, it was way too complicated and there were all sorts of problems with it. And I don't like the way Harvest is now. Um, but you know, the old way Harvest was like things like that were really cool. Um, but, uh, you know, but yeah, there, there were issues for sure. Well, um, other than the yeah. gameplay side of things, uh, one thing that I think is really important personally for a league mechanic, um, is that it offers something you can't get anywhere else. Uh, for like sure. if you want to Very double important. corrupt an item, then you do temple, yep, just have sure. to, you can't get, um, for sure. yeah. So is, is that going to be a, at least a thought process behind 100%, league design in PV2? 100%. It's okay. very important that, um, like, you, you, that, that, that is what the end game makes the end game feel um, like there's a lot of variety because you've got different goals. Like, oh, now I have to do this, now I have to do this. Like, you know, it just it adds a lot of variety to things. Uh, so it's really important that different content has different um, rewards that are possible from it, for sure. Oh, um, I have a few questions about uh, specific skills. Now, there's been mm -hmm. a lot of new skills highlighted, a, a lot of combination of skills, a lot of mm -hmm. skill modification with a few of the supports you've highlighted. But there are a few skills in PoE 1 that I feel have kind of become the game for some players. So I yep. wanted to kind of uh, point those out. And uh, if, if you can, maybe mention if there will be a skill like it in PoE 2. So mm -hmm. first up on the list, as probably many people might expect me to ask you, is Righteous Fire. Will we have a Righteous Fire in PoE 2? There will be Righteous Fire. There will, will it work be Righteous exactly Fire. Exactly identically? No, but ideally the it should feel like the same type of thing and the flavor of Righteous Fire should all come across completely. Um, but ideally we can do it in a way where it feels like there's interesting combos with it, has interesting mechanics that can work along, uh, alongside it and so on. So um, yeah, like absolutely there will be Righteous Fire. And ideally, there should be any kind of really iconic thing from PoE One, like any kind of iconic skill. Um, we will we will really need to find a place for it in PoE Two as well. Um, we uh, did have a discussion about the exact mechanics of how Righteous Fire works. We did come up with a plan, uh, so hopefully you guys will enjoy it when you uh, when when we, when we talk about it. Uh, uh, I believe it should be in the um, it should be in the Templar um, an, an announcement at some point. Okay. Well, closer to home for me is about minions. Now, you have mentioned that minions exist in PoE 2, so we know that already. But I was personally curious if there is uh, more of a push towards temporary minions as there kind of is now in PoE 1. There will be specters. Uh, like the yes, there was brought up on the uh, Xlock has kind of fallen off over the years and recent patches, and the scaling for temporary minions has actually increased over that same time span. Um, I have a lot of ideas around minions, and we're going to be talking about that when we announce the uh, the witch stuff um, later, um, I guess next year, technically still. Um, so there's going to be a big discussion about that, and we've got a lot of features there. We, we put a lot of thought into minions. Um, it's obviously one of those things that Action RPG people, you know, like there, there are certain class of people who play Action RPGs who that's all they want to play. Um, so we have to make sure that we've got a really, really good minion story, as it were. Um, so, uh, yeah, because of that... Um, Sorry, boys. The, uh, yeah, they minions, got a catered to me. Minions are going to get a lot of attention, and you'll see that fairly soon, I think. Now, one thing with minions that wait, 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 wait. Let me Let me rewind that. Listen to what he said. Like, there, there are a certain class of people who play action RPGs who that's all they want to play. Um, so we have to make sure that we've got a really, really good minion story, as it were. Listen um, to... So, uh, yeah, because of that... Um, the uh, yeah minions minions are going to get a lot of attention and you'll see that minions are going to get a lot of attention. There now you one go, boys. thing with minions that kind of comes as a drawback uh, in PoE one is kind of the visual clarity, where um, I, once once I have class of people yes yes you got your magic finders your bow players delve enjoyers fucking blight enjoyers down here. Right above them, you'll find melee enjoyers. You know, the three or four people in the entire world that plays melee. And then you have the rest. Then you got your peasants up here. <laughs> and then you got your middle class people, your high class people. You got your royalties. And then up 
here is where you find the minion players. More of a powerful summoner, it and I'm summoning more minions, and they have like more <laughs> AOE in their attacks. I'm not I biased, feel like by the way. The visual clarity of just me yeah. being yeah. able to see the boss mechanics yeah. kind of starts going down and down. In PoE yeah. one, they have they has this like setting which is like bloom, but that affects both things. It affects both the boss mechanics in some cases as well as like your skills and the minion skills. So there's no like great way to kind of. Uh, maintain full clarity of the boss mechanics uh, it's well, but, I, but I am stronger so i don't know okay. it's kind of been a trade-off in poe one is there some address to this in poe two i can i th there isn't like a specific technical like here's the specific solution but i can tell you that visual clarity of minions is like the primary concern that i have around minions for sure when <laughs> when, when, when looking at the stuff um and because, in comes uh, the zoom answer how, you know i <laughs> You w there is a certain feeling you want with minions where you kind of like like in, in poe one it just feels like chaos a lot of the time like there's just shit everywhere like it doesn't feel like there's a front line as it were and things like there's these kinds of issues mm -hmm. i want to try and make it feel a bit different in poe too so we do have a lot of like stuff around this and uh even if you looked at the whiteboard in my office right now um uh like half the issues on their uh visual clarity to do with minion issues right now um, so yeah, it's definitely a, a concern. Um, it's just a matter of like a bit, just better design, really, when it comes to what the minions' abilities look like and, and this kind of stuff. Um, as well as just there's, there's just a lot of it's it's kind of like a thousand individual subtle things that kind of add together to make things to have more clarity. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of true across PoE two in general. Like there's a lot of focus on trying to make sure that there's visual clarity um, well, with the skills, even if they even though they look really modern and cool, they're still always wanted to be a uh, uh, you know, clarity like. Uh, because we're, you know, get the opportunity to have a bit of a reset here graphically, it means that we can consider very carefully, like, what slots around the enemies do the um, different effects go in, and like, you know, how can we make sure that, you know, like we're kind of making sure, okay, like, if something's like on, uh, like a, and this, this may actually not be like 100% correct, but it's like if something's on the, like, blade of the weapon, then that is always a herald effect, for example, you know, like nothing else is taking that, that oh, slot on the character, so you kind of know that, like, you know, like these, these kind of things are, are kind of what we're trying to do to make sure that um, everything has its place and you kind of always can see things without having to have too much overlap. Um, and uh, hopefully, I mean, sure, a little bit of that goes out the door a little bit when you start having MTXs heavily involved, but um at least uh without those like you know the, the visual clarity should be very good um uh, if we're doing our job well <laughs> okay um, um so bit of a subject swap here um in poe one when it comes to designing a character a lot of it kind of has to do with putting check marks on defensive goals so right. the first round of goals is like avoiding lockouts so you don't get stunned don't get frozen and then the second one is usually don't get killed by physical damage because physical damage is unique in a way where more of it just ruins your ability to stack armor and the third one is just like does this character get one shot from typical stuff that happens to it is this kind of going to be a similar checklist in in poe 2 or uh is it a different approach to defenses um i don't know that it's not particularly easy to necessarily avoid that but what i would say these is bags that, are great um, i would hope that we don't get to the point where you have to They're feel fantastic. like every character needs to be completely immune to certain mechanics um like ideally it should be a reasonable choice to choose between is this something i'm mitigating or is this something i'm completely um preventing um so uh, that should always that should always feel like it's a choice uh, but at the same time um like having certain things you need to be able to deal with as part of a build is you know like part of the i guess the trade-off you're making when it comes to like you know how like like you need a bit of tension to make defense like to make it so that you don't just make a complete glass cannon with zero attention paid to defense at all you do need to some extent to have um you know like how am i going to deal with this particular problem so i think Try that was sort of the, that the, with mad um, well, i can't promise the right I, I, I forgot to do the lee mechanic i should um, do that with mad actually that, um, now you reminded me i am not sorry i'm just paying attention to the podcast here with i would say mm -hmm. as some other people on the team um i mean obviously i still kind of like you know talk about the stuff but um you know people like rory and mark tend to be a little bit more um you know like knowing about like have specific thoughts around that stuff uh well maybe this isn't to uh, uh apt of a question but I'll, I'll ask it ask it anyway um mm -hmm. will you 
perhaps eventually be able to trivialize a mechanic entirely. Like I know the stun mechanic in PoE 2 is much more sophisticated than PoE 1, but are you able they to should... make a character that's completely ignoring stuns of all kinds if they you want? Should, there should always be a way to do that. The cost of it should always be something, right? You know what I mean? So like, I mean, there's absolutely will be a unique that's going to be like you can't get stunned, right? There's mm -hmm. going to be uniques like that. Okay. Um, there may be a keystone that does like that, that, that does that in exchange for some kind of big downside, but there always just has to be a downside in order for that to be able to happen. Um, and then, of course, you know, you should be able to invest in stun... We are currently listening to Kriparian and jo um, Jonathan Rogers tomorrow in uh, 23 hours and 40 minutes. Uh, we are going to be having a podcast at the uh, DM channel, the ARPG podcast, Me and Dark Magic Transaction, has launched called Tavern Talks. In that, we're going to have Jonathan Rogers himself uh, that we are listening to right now, as well as Mark joining us. To talk about PoE2. Production to the point where it no longer phases you as well, right? This kind of thing should be should be possible. So that that should always be possible. It's just always comes it's just always like cost benefit, right? Like what are you um uh you know what are you trading for that? Um in terms of character design, I think it's maybe at least for me one of the best thing that PoE one does where um it always seems difficult to get enough of everything. Like, you can yep. make a character that does millions or even, like, a billion damage, but you can only really do that if you have no defenses. Or you can awesome. make a yeah, character that's great. extremely tanky, but the that's damage awesome. ends up being lackluster to a point where you literally have to tank more things. For sure. Um, is is this going to be a similar right. approach to PoE2 yeah. character design? Absolutely, absolutely. And this has actually come up when we were discussing the tree about, like, things like, okay, um, so this is another tree philosophy thing. Is like, okay, should it be that the reason that you get a variety of things on the tree is because there just aren't enough nodes for a given thing to be able to do that? Or should it be that there's always enough nodes to be able to allocate for a given thing? It's just that you don't want to do that because you've got other concerns that you need to do. And I think it's the second one that's important. Like, if you really want to allocate every single point into, you know, some particular stat that's, you know, freeze reduction or something random like that, then there will be nodes for you to do that. It's just that you don't want to do that because, you know, that's not the only important thing. And I think that's kind of just generally how we look at our philosophy around this stuff. All right. So some people uh, aren't quite aware because, you know, it's it's one class here, one class there. And we haven't seen a lot of, like, the trailers for the classes that already exist in PoE 1, which mm -hmm. we have at least heard of a little bit that they're being redesigned in some ways. But eventually mm -hmm. we're going to have 36 Ascendancy classes Perfect. in PoE 2. Um, and my first oh, question is, if we have like twice as many Ascendancy classes, um, is there going to be a different design in like the lifetime of a character when a new league comes out or a new content update comes out? Like, um, it, are, are you expecting players to play like many characters in each season or like one or two kind of how they are in PoE 1? It should be a list in the guide's look like here, bro. Depends on the build you're um, playing. The fact that there's a lot of options there, I mean, the intention is for PoE 2 to last a long time, right? So, like, ideally, you know, like, like having more classes like that just means that there's, you're, it's going to be a lot longer before you have run out of stuff to try. Um, so, ultimately, that's the that's the reason why there's um, why there's so many that we just want to have a lot of stuff that you can that you know to, to play around with. So, um, yeah, I imagine that in each league, it's going to be one to two characters, just like it is in PoE. One. Mm -hmm. In uh, in PoE one, it's taking like dedicated players that are focusing on leveling. Um, I'm not going to say some days, which are like the fastest times, but let's say like a week to hit max sure. level. Um, is that kind of like a, a goal post that you guys are trying to hit in PoE 2 as well in terms of the pacing for a character? Um, I think it should take a bit longer than a week. Um, I would sort of feel like I'd want to go back a little bit in terms of how long it takes to be more like what it was like sort of three to four years ago, I oh. would say. Um, I'm gonna pause him right there. Okay, so you guys know that leveling in PoE has recently gone. It's so fast. Oh my god, it's so fast. Jesus fucking Christ. You thought a Koenigsegg or a Ferrari or a Lamborghini is fast? You ain't saying the speed of leveling people have these days. It's crazy. Many years ago, I used to race in hardcore, uh, back before people went solo cell phone racing in the PoE community. I raced for almost five years in this game. And um, those races, they were not over in a couple of days. They, ooh, 
those races had more to do with consistent performance and it was a marathon and what we used to do was like 30 hours sitting with five hours sleep and then 30 hours sitting five hours sleep you rinse repeated that schedule till the race was over it was rough and if that's what they're looking for there will be a race scene in poe2 like the race scene in poe1 will jump over and it will join in and do the same thing that they do here but in poe2 that's just a given it's a big scene of the community whether you like it or not doesn't matter it's there and it will be active so if they want over a week to reach it maybe they're talking about week average for your average gamer i don't know but i mean if it's gonna be what they said how it was that long ago that's gonna be very rough um you know where, where it was a bit longer um but i mean it'll take people a while just to sort of learn the game i think um so i well, suspect the first time people play the content it's going to take them quite a while um like as i was saying before like you know the first time i beat a boss earlier it was like five minutes and then like that went down on my second time to like two minutes so even just from that perspective like you know and, and, and it slowly improves so i think that people will get faster and faster um, so, I, I mean, I honestly don't know at this point how long it will take people the first time through the campaign, and I suspect it will take them a very long time. Um, but, uh, yeah, it'll get faster. At least what what is a do. very long time? Um, it, honestly, I, I honestly don't know for sure, because we don't have, like, the entire... Like, not every area is, like, um, fully... Like, like, it's not playable. I mean... All the areas are there, but they're not playable in the sense that, like, like if you have bad monsters, like, when I say bad, I mean, like, monsters that don't have, like, all their abilities and stuff like that in an area, it's just boring, so, like, nobody wants to play those areas. Um, so that means that we don't really have, like, proper progression testing. Like, we've polished the f first half of each act kind of thing, um, and so we haven't got, like, a sort of full, like, you can just play through the whole game to do progression testing yet. So that means that well, I can't actually say how long it will take, but mm -hmm. I honestly believe that, like, for an average player, I mean, like, it's got to be at least like gotta be at least 40 50 hours i think oh wow um I, I imagine that's how long it will take sort of your average player to get through like it could be longer honestly for people who like a, haven't played an action rpg before probably um so that that kind of things i mean i guess that's kind of like half an hour per zone when you include like you know fighting bosses like mm -hmm. i kind of i sort of want people to die like one to two times on each boss the first time they play it um because they haven't learned the mechanics yet like it should feel that way when you're kind of playing through the first time um and uh so that will mean you know like that that kind of thing so like it, just it's just a little bit harder like you know uh, but, but but the thing is i think poe one may even be that hard for people who just play the game for the first time now um it's just that once you played it you know how many yeah. times people have played it it becomes trivial to the point where you're like okay i could never die to this thing um but uh because of the fact that you actually uh you know that you, you have to restart the boss if you die to it now it will force you to actually learn the mechanics and kind of you know work out these things during your first uh, playthrough okay uh so uh that, that'll be interesting but yeah it'll, it'll take people a while all right um well that is it for the questions that i had personally but i have scoured the internet for unanswered questions and i have picked a few up from chat and if you guys want to post your question in chat if it's at least different enough from what we've already discussed or what i have i'll maybe try to include it near the end um but yeah we, we you know people do have to be in places eventually so uh we uh we don't have jonathan forever um but yes uh with with that in mind uh, i want to ask some of the questions they might be a little bit less researched than some of my own uh so I might brace yourself for some short answers but that's okay hopefully uh so here we go um i found this one on a youtube comment i believe uh, oh no i think it was on the official thread of this uh interview on the poe um forums so uh, tell us about the die system you mentioned in 2019. I don't know anything about um, this, so please. <clears throat> yeah, I guess I probably mentioned that back in ExileCon uh, back in 2019. Um, it's something that we could still do, but it's not honestly something that I've kind of thought about for a little while. Um, I know it's something that a lot of players are very keen for, but um, like it's kind of not really on my radar at this point. Like We're just focusing on content, really. Um, but uh, there's nothing really preventing us from doing it. It would just be a matter of marking up all the armors and you know, the parts that get uh, modified and so on. Um, so it's just a bunch of, 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 of work. And you get auras? Yeah, um, but what do I need so, them yeah, for? It can be done. I don't, well, I would have spent the time and waste my really time in town for there. it. I don't it's, need it. It's, um, it's kind of... I know that would be disappointing for a lot of players, but it's just kind of one of those things that has kind of fallen by the wayside a little bit as we've been uh, grinding out on a bunch more, a bunch more content, unfortunately. I have a bunch of skill All points right. in my backpack um, as well. 
So uh, 99% of oh, actually, PoE team misgivings have been about the gameplay My pace. Bad. Now, you've kind of adjusted this a little bit, but I kind of want to ask it again and ask you how Can't how is it true. current it is down, relative to maybe what we've seen a few months ago at ExileCon? Is, is that still kind of what we're expecting? Or is that, as you mentioned, a bit slowed down so people can kind of see the clarity a little bit? Um, so I guess I kind of don't really... Like, okay, so a lot of people are like, oh, you know, you're, you're slowing it down to do this, or you're kind of, you know, like, they have a lot of things like that. But I think really when it comes to um, the, when we're like, so this actually relates a little bit what I was saying before about um, how we haven't been able to do full progression testing yet. Which is that when we, what that means is that when we're balancing an area to like, to do a demonstration or for XLCon, the demos and all this sort of stuff, we kind of just like, we make a character that's about what we think it should be for this area, and then we kind of balance the monsters um, from that point for the demo um, to just kind of hit like what we want, where we expect to sort of be able to understand the mechanics and 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 kind of like give a good show of how the class should be. Um, I think at XLCon, um, it probably was balanced a little hard, um, but the thing is, each demo is kind of its own thing because of the fact that yeah, like as I said, we don't have a full like sort of progression test through the whole game yet, so. Um, uh, XLCon, uh, like, because of these demos are just like how they are, effectively what it is is just like me and Mark will play it, and then we'll be like, did we get through it too quickly or didn't we, and then adjust accordingly. Um, so we just adjust it until it feels fun to us. So um, I think when it, people maybe sort of ascribe um, a little bit too much to that sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, um, I think that it's probably good, best to look at um, the pacing stuff to be more like uh, when, when we were discussing uh, earlier, uh, with, with with maps and what the median player versus the um, one percent players would be doing, I think mm. we still want to make sure that there's still a ten times disparity in efficiency between a good and a bad player um, in that situation. And so that would certainly imply that there can be certainly a pretty good amount of pace you can get up to. Um, but what I do think is also bad, and I guess this is another philosophical thing, is that I don't think it's really good when you um, someone uh, opens up Path of Exile on Twitch. They look at what the game looks like at um, the absolute one percent end of it, and it just looks like utter just like what is even going on on the screen. You know, it's just like shit is everywhere. There's like I cannot. There's no visual clarity. I cannot tell what the hell is going on, and the boss melts in like two seconds. You know what I mean? Like I don't think that's really very good either. Um, so you do need to be able to get um, a lot more efficiency um, than than the average player, uh, but we do have to be a little bit careful. Um, but I don't know, like, I guess all of that is to say that, like, it's a little bit hard to say exactly what the pace will be like in maps at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I have no doubt that the um, the peak will still be high, and the, and the and but I, it may not be as high as it currently is in POE 1. Um, I think that's very likely. Um, but at the same time, like, it's really important that people feel like they're able to break the game. Like, you want people to feel like, oh, I'm breaking the game right now. I'm, like, got an insane amount of projectiles, like, way more than I should be able to have. Like, all this kind of stuff. So, yeah. I guess this is a bit of a hedged non-answer, which I worry is a bit of a problem here. Um, <laughs> well, that's still a development. That Thank you. Uh, I, I, yeah, 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 I appreciate I you. Thank you. you for that. Um, I w right, right, right. The way that I asked the question was, um, you know, kind of seeing post-Ruthless Experiment what your thoughts may be on, on the matter. And you're, and you're definitely right that it's the number one issue that people talk about about POE 2. Like, the fear in the POE 1 community is that it's just going to be super slow-paced. And um, I don't think it will feel that way. I think that when you play it, you'll have fun. And ultimately, that's all that I'm after, right? Like, like so it's, it's actually interesting because there's, there's been cases of this, right, where, like, I was playing the Mercenary um, in the demo uh, for the... Um, uh, yeah, for, uh, for the demo that we recorded. And then um, I went back and I played... Um, uh, what was it I was playing? I think it was... I think it might have been the Mar Mar uh, the, the the warrior actually. Uh, afterwards, uh, the what the demo character we had at ExileCon was like, man, this is way too slow. <laughs> so even um, even just from from me, like it can often be the case that my my, my, my opinions change as I'm playing as I, as I'm as I'm playing things. Uh, it really going to come down perfect to aura would kind of uh, would apply to them, um, but, but, but the, I, I guess the, the, main, the buff that only applies to constructs would not apply to skeletons. Now, day has to be that when you get an item, you feel there's like a thing an called judgmental character. spirits um, that does that, it. Um, Thank you, Mara. Um, so uh, you know, like we we still have to maintain that feeling through the whole game, and um, and there, there has to be a feeling of progress as you go through. So uh, yeah, like that's kind of we'll kind of I guess end up. What color is uh, magi honestly, yellow? And or it may sound no, not silly, but it's like it just has to Purple's feel fun Warlock. to me, right? Like I have to play it and feel like this feels fun. Yeah. Uh, and if it doesn't feel fun to me, then I'll. Then is I'll, it blue then or I'll yellow? Increase the numbers. It is yellow. Okay. <laughs> and that's, that's really what it comes down to. Thank you.
I have a question about um, how much of an end game map is the boss in it, I suppose. Uh, oh, yeah. You've kind of, uh, of answered this slightly through your mastery of, you know, repeatedly going up against these bosses and just defeating them faster and faster. Mm -hmm. But I guess we can broadly ask you perhaps. Um, Sorry, I'm so focused on the podcast. How much a map that you do in the end game of PoE2 should the boss be? Yeah, so I think that in terms of drops, at the very least, so we've actually discussed the drops in particular. Judgmental Spirit, one third of the Arena, map and then just the regular ones after that. One third of the map should just be regular monsters, and one third of the map should be other events and things that come up, like League content and things like that. Uh, which isn't to say necessarily that every map will always have stuff like that, but on average across many maps it should be about one third, one third, one third. Um, and um, ideally that should roughly map onto the amount of time that you spend doing those things as well. Um, so that's kind of my view on it at least, is yeah, roughly a third I would say would, should be should be the map boss. Um, I don't know if you're fully comfortable answering this one, but um, inquiring minds uh, are curious. Uh, why did you guys decide to continue working on one and two at the same time, like separately, rather than evolving PoE1 to PoE2? I know it was like a big announcement that it's going to be its own yeah, yeah. project, but I guess people really didn't get the why sufficiently um so it really comes down to we want to be able to make whatever changes we want to make without <laughs> I mean, you do already it so that's a good. problem for the existing community and um when we first announced in 2019 what we were planning on doing i don't think we appreciated at the time the degree to which the changes would actually change the game and so it really just came down to like you know we had people in the office who are like i'm really worried um that the game you know like i'm talking about like people in the qa team and things like that they were just really worried that, you know i'm worried that you that the game that you make won't necessarily be the path of excel that i like right i mean they still look at what we're doing and you know they, they like what we're doing but there was some worry there mm -hmm. and so when i heard that i kind of th thought about it like pretty hard for a while i talked to mark quite a bit about it and we kind of said you know we really just wanted to be free to be able to let the games diverge without having to constantly work because I, I worried that the decisions that we wanted to make for PoE, like I didn't want PoE one to hold PoE two back as far as like having to make balanced decisions. Like we didn't want to have things like where we're like, oh, you know, we can't change this because then all these players will get angry or things like that. We wanted to be kind of free to be able to just like make whatever changes we wanted to to make. And I think the PoE one compatibility idea was just sort of starting Your to become a thing where like, oh, we can't change this because it would, you know, have you break, like this or break that or whatever it was. So, and that's really the reason. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, once we decided that, I think uh, we started to get a lot more crazy uh, with the kind of changes that we would, were doing. So things like WASD, I don't think would have happened under the old model. I don't think we would have been able to um, accept that kind of thing um, just because uh, the mode we were thinking about was much too much a kind of like, you know, we're, we're extending the game rather than making a new game i think uh it Be was careful. not enough in that direction so um yeah it really just comes down to that and as for why we want to continue supporting poe one well i mean I, you know like it's still a, a great wow. game um it just is a, i agree it's just sure a bit the, of a different the, game. the suggestion is uh, so to try not to pay attention to it and you don't get annoyed because once you do it. you do get annoyed um, so uh, yeah like i see no reason why we can't do that all right that's excellent um, I had a question. Uh, people were wondering about hideouts. Uh, the question they had was, uh, are you going to have bigger or more in-depth hideouts than PoE 1? But I guess the base question is, are we even going to have hideouts at all? There'll be hideouts. There'll be hideouts for okay. sure. Um, the mecha of course, mechanically, it's a source of um, I don't think they'll probably change too right? much. Um, maybe there's like there's probably more we can do to make them a bit more interesting. Um, but I still really like the you know the whole freeform placement and decorating and all that sort of stuff. Um, like I want to keep all of that. Um, it should work that way. And also the 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 POE one microtransaction hideouts. Um, I, I want to still be there in POE two. You can still use them and just have that as your hideout. Um, so uh, yeah, like that that should all come across. Um, a question was about losing experience on death. Uh, yeah. I think yeah, yeah. it's pretty interesting because right now in PoE 1, some people like it, some people don't like it, but mm -hmm. the the landscape for it is like if you run up against the boss where you die... I just want to point out, someone in chat wanted me to ask this earlier and I was pretty confident this was already covered because some people told me that it was asked in this. We got that confirmed here, so that's why I didn't add it to the list. Yeah, all the MTX will work in both places. You just look mm -hmm. up how to beat the boss, or you yep. look up a so, build that can beat the boss. But with none of that 
existing in PoE2, I feel like the, the death penalty, if it was the same, would <coughs> feel a bit uh, overbearing in some cases. Yeah. So in campaign, there's no AXP penalty in PoE2. Okay. It's gone. Uh, and that's because you're expected to die to the bosses. And um, basically, as soon as you make, as soon as, like, the declaration of I want you to be dying one, one, one to two times for each campaign boss for the first time kind of implies, well, we can't have an XP penalty then. And also, in, in, in POE 1, that was the only penalty that actually, uh, like, was anything because of the fact that you could just go resume the boss from where you left off. Whereas now the penalty is that, you know, you, um, uh, you have to start the boss again. Uh, that's, that's enough of a penalty uh, in itself. Uh, so that's fine. We don't need the XP penalty anymore. Um, but the one question is, uh, what about in maps? And I don't necessarily think that the X penalty is that important in early end game, but I think in late end game it actually is very important. Mm -hmm. and that's because um, you need, to, in order to have some kind of challenge to get to to make it challenging to get to level one hundred, you need to have something that's kind of going to make it like effectively a build check, as it were, to make sure that you actually have survivability in your build. Um, and so uh, the the X penalty is what makes that allowed to happen. Um, so we definitely need to have an X penalty towards the very end of the game. Um, so um, I'm not exactly sure what we're going to be doing to sort of kick that in exactly yet, um, but there'll be some kind of kick in of X penalty towards the towards the uh, the later end game to sort of make it so that um, Thank yeah, you, you still have to actually have a survivable build. Uh, I keep forgetting. I'm just listening. Um, the next question I have, I'll just read it as it was asked, but I. I... I do know there's a bit more to it, so I'll add on it a little bit. So the question mm -hmm. was, how do we interact with flasks and how many flask slots do we have? I know it's been announced that the the a flasks your... kind of will not recover from normal monsters and will be kind of in a way replacing guard yeah. skills. So do you um, have well... maybe a bit more to add about that? <laughs> Uh, so basically, the, the the philosophy there. So just to talk a little bit about why we did that. So to have it so that um, so only only um, blues and above monsters will actually recover life flasks because there wasn't enough state um, in uh, in Path of Exile one, in my opinion, with regard to your ca uh, character. And what I mean by that is, and this actually, um, which one was it? Uh, yeah, I'm talking about Final Fantasy thirteen. I think it was. Uh, was that the one? I think it was Final Fantasy thirteen. Which is a game I hated. <laughs> um, the reason I didn't like it uh, was because your character, um, you effectively every time, uh, when, when, when every time you finished a, a, a battle in that game, your character was reset to um, to full life. What that meant was, um, is that there were really no resources. Like there was no feeling of like like if you fight a group of five monsters and you fight the same group of five monsters again, it's literally always exactly the same fight because there's no um, there's no resource that carries on between the between the fights. And um, that was a thing that made me really dislike that game because it just felt very grindy because, you know, there was no sort of feeling of tension of, like, getting... Like, in, in previous games in that series, there was this feeling of, like, you know, you leave town, you, you kind of have this, like... Uh, like, your health is kind of it's slowly decreasing as you sort of go through the game. And um, uh, then eventually you run out of resources and you have to go back. And um, while I don't necessarily want it to be that you're always going to run out of flask charges in PoE 2, that is not the case... I do want it to be that it's not that it isn't just that you're always on full flask charges because the flasks have to kind of on some level on, on some level the flasks are really your health bar. Um, like uh, your you can recover your life in PoE very very quickly, and um, so it's really your flask state that is kind of the main state of your character. Um, and so uh, yeah, like that that is something that I kind of want to make to still be the case. Now there's going to be things like leech and so on that's going to allow you to solve those problems that not in, you know like without necessarily using flasks. And then of course towards the end game you're going to be replacing some of your flasks with other things and so on. But um, I do think that uh, it is important that you don't just feel like every time I kill a pack I get full all of my life flasks uh, char my flask charges back. Mm -hmm. um, as for guard flasks and things like that, flasks are a nice like resource limiting mechanic that we can use. Uh, to allow, for, for things uh, where we don't want to have a cooldown, but we do want to have something that you use on occasion. And I think the tension between life, uh, mana, and um, and what other resource that you have um, is pretty good. Um, so, uh, but at the same time, we don't want to kind of be flask piano where you're just like constantly, you know, um, uh, just constantly using them. So, ideally, they kind of get to a point where um, you use them in the right circumstance. You don't use them otherwise, and there's some interesting tension there, um, and uh, they can serve as a nice uh, resource mechanic. Um, that all players have access to that um, you can kind of choose, you know, like what, what you want to use there. So hopefully that kind of gives you some idea. Unless you've got any other questions about any of that, that sort of 
like kind of basic philosophy around flasks? Um, personally, no. Um, I'm kind of curious to see what you guys come up with in in the final mm -hmm. design of it. Um, I think it's it's one of those things where there's so many uh, factors that come together to like a feel good flask system. That's really difficult yeah. for me to say. I like sure. I like it because of a right. It's it's yeah, just yeah, yeah. the whole thing has to kind of have a good feel to it. But I will say that changing, not having charges come from normal monsters was an instant game feel upgrade, in my opinion, like okay. when we made that change. And um, surprisingly, we didn't, like, I, I, I thought we would have to buff the amount of flash charges that monsters gave, uh, the ones that do give charges in response to that. And then we just didn't, and it seemed to be, and it seemed to be fine. <laughs> so um, that, I, I, that might not be entirely accurate, but yeah, it didn't, it didn't take much to actually make that change work well, as it turned out. Okay. Uh, the biggest issue actually was just really early game before there before you have um uh very many blue and um and, and yellow monsters mm -hmm. uh because you weren't getting enough charges there um so that's when we made it so the checkpoints give you um charges um and that kind of resolved the issue plus a bit of tweaking about early game flask uh like uh, the pool size and a few other details like that and we kind of managed to get it to feel pretty good i think all right um so a question here is about like uh casual group play um, it said that, uh, you know, other ARPGs in the genre generally, uh, do it pretty well, but in PoE, it felt punishing to play with another person, is, is the, the, the question that I found online. So, I'm... uh, the podcast starts in about 23 hours, yeah. Uh, yes, it's that late because, uh, my co-host starts microtransaction, he's in Alaska, and that's in the States, and then we got... That is actually the earliest we could make it, so both Mark and Jonathan Rogers could join us. Uh, that's like 9.30 morning time in, um, in New Zealand. So we literally have more or less the entire planet. So the only time frame that would work without it being super late night anywhere is that time frame. Later would be midnight time for for C, like Europe. So it's the best time frame we could make it so that everyone has the highest possibility of being able to tune in. I'm kind of curious okay. if PoE2 will kind of address kind of like casual play with other people. Tomorrow's in, podcast. In ways well. that PoE1 doesn't, perhaps. Um, well, there is... Australia and New Zealand should be there, morning time, really right? I don't to announce any of that right now, unfortunately. But I'm curious to know what the punishing... It's the only time frame that gets fucked to, by it. Uh, ...with that. Because um, I don't know that I feel like I, I am aware about that I've been SSF for like four years, personally. So, Five, sixteen, yeah, exactly. Uh, like, it's the yes, only time frame that gets fucked I don't have much input over. on this either. Maybe I'm just terribly misinformed about this, but um, I guess I, I, I'm not aware of the of pun being punishing to play with another person. Sorry, I'm sure man. the life increases, but... You know, you've got Exile has tested you, my brother. Sorry, I'm trying here. Okay. <laughs> um, I have a question about a character preview with uh, MTX being ported Harrison. over and its mm -hmm. own MTX. Um, mm -hmm. Path of Exile 1, you just kind of have to impractically yeah. zoom on your character oh, yeah, to really appreciate it. This is something that we intend to address, Nightmare and prevails. you should note that because the MTX store is the same in PoE 1 and 2, that any changes we do make to the MTX store will be in PoE 1 That's, well. That's, That's good. Really That's really good. good. So, uh, yeah, it's something that I definitely hear. We would like to have MTX preview. Uh, we are working on it. And um, you know we will we will hopefully get there before too long, um, because yes I agree it's something that we really should have. Uh, but I will note that while it's easy for certain uh, things, it is quite hard for others, especially with the complexity around the MTXs uh, these days. So um, yeah, there's quite a lot of work to do there. Uh, but we are intending to do that work. So we'll be able to get that one all right um now this question doesn't have quite that much meaning to me but when i opened up the floor to twitch chat to ask their questions the one that was spammed like crazy was cross save slash cross platform play question mark so may yep. maybe you can uh do them a favor and and give them some insight um, console players i really down bad. do want to talk about this um but our console stuff we kind of haven't really talked about this yet um, but suffice to say, uh, PoE 2 will be a much better experience on console than PoE 1 was. And um, take that answer for what you will. Um, but uh, we're going to be talking a lot more about those details um, before too long, uh, where we talk about uh, what we've got going on uh, on console. With uh, console play being uh, part of the 
uh, mindfulness of the project, let's say. Um, what what might people expect for hard hardware requirements? Are the ones listed on the Steam page still about right? Um, I believe that the Steam Path of Exile 2, uh, the, the Path of Exile 2 Steam page, uh, which you can go to and wishlist, by the way, <laughs> uh, just to quickly you know, plug that, um, uh, I should should be correct. Um, so I believe that what's listed on there is like a 960 is the is the lowest. Um, that's Nvidia 960 is the we lowest um, uh, spec, and um, I, that probably won't be like the most amazing experience ever on that card. But I believe that's what we have as our sort of minimum requirement there. All right. Uh, what is your stance I'm on sorry, builds God. that require 10 plus uniques to function? And for the example they gave us, the Golemancer. So I guess we're including jewels in this uh, list of 10. I mean, um, th there should absolutely be builds like that. Um, but ideally, most builds have some combination of rares and uniques, um, would, would be my opinion. Um, but I mean, yeah, like that kind of thing can happen, right? You want some builds to be expensive and some to be cheap. That's just absolutely effective. So, um, yeah, I there should be some shit to build up. <laughs> They function, but that's um, it. Question, how can we get a beta key for PoE2? <laughs> um, so we haven't officially announced that yet, but if you look at the um, 300 beta, um, you should expect something very similar after what happened there. Okay. Um, about the rearrangement of UI pieces, um, will there be an debuffs. option to drag buffs and debuffs around? Please. I guess for personal Please. customization clarity Please. type of thing? Um, Why is it an instant I know yes? I UX guy was kind of keen on this, which is possibly what we might potentially allow that. Um, there's sort of various updates to how that stuff works. Um, I guess I'm sort of mostly fine with that. It's probably not that hard to implement, so it's something we could probably do, but I don't want to promise it immediately just because... You know, just fucking get it kind done! Of like do a bit more exploration of Jonathan, it. Jonathan, let's go! Kind of Please! Like Everybody okay. wants it! Um... So I have a pretty long question here. I'm just trying to understand it, to summarize it a bit. But I guess the question is, uh, how much will you be able to kind of customize an encounter, like, uh, for example, a map, to kind of be something your character can take on? Like, let's say if it's a map with a difficult boss where he'd scale, like, lightning damage, you wouldn't want to do, like, a minus max resists in PoE 1, for example. You have that layer of customizability to curb the challenge. Right. Um, is, so, is something like that going to exist in PoE 2? There will there will definitely be ways to customize. Like I mean, like in PoE 1, there will definitely be things you can do to customize maps. Um, at, 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 as a starting point, of course, there's just map mods, right? Like just the mods yeah, that are on the map. Yeah, just fucking do it, mate. That's, that's still there and still works largely the same way, although there just will be a, like, do it. a lot of... The particulars will change a lot as far as... Starting like, to sound like a goddamn Nike like commercial. The, the, um, the rewards of its scale and this kind of thing. Um, there will also need to be a system um, that won't be the Atlas tree, like it won't be the same as the Atlas tree, but certainly there needs to be other sources of mods that maps can get um, in some fashion, um, and that will come down to uh, the design of the in-game system, which uh, we haven't talked about yet. Um, but effectively there will need to be things like that, so... Um... Uh, hopefully that kind of answers the question about uh, about, about that. But effectively, there'll be there'll, there'll there'll be the same sort of things you can expect from here, like from here we want an end game where you can customize maps, basically. Okay, good. With mods and stuff. Um, so a question here about the flask system once again. Uh, is there a chance that refilling flasks at wells will be revisited if players don't like it? And maybe I can actually add a little bit of input on this. So, in Ruthless, this is how it works. And what I did in my hideout is I put the NPC that refills flask right next to the portal I normally take yeah. when I enter the map. So this is a good it's question. It's literally like one extra click for me to the point mm -hmm. where, yeah, it doesn't really seem super worth it to have that as a mechanic because you trivialize it anyway. What do you think? Um, so this is one of those funny little things where... Um, it's like, not funny, just... It may not seem to matter that much. There's just a little, there's just a tiny little extra bit of making the town cycle feel like it has some purpose, you know what I mean? Hmm. I do appreciate the fact that in Ruthless, like, you know, sure, I mean, the fact that you can move stuff around in your hideout kind of just means that it ends up in the endgame being mostly trivialized. And maybe what that actually means is that for hideouts, we make it so that it works a little bit different and, like, it just refills you, there's, there's, it just refills your flask automatically while there or something like that. Um, but it was just kind of like just during the campaign though it just kind of has the slight feeling of like you know like makes the world feel a little bit more kind of you know like i, I guess it, it just 
you, you want a bit of physicality to some of these things in some cases. Um, I don't think that once you've kind of done it a little bit in PoE2, it doesn't feel particularly wrong at all. Um, we've made sure to place the wells pretty close to where the portals are and this kind of thing. Um, but I mean, look, at the end of the day, we're not in the business of, you know, like making people hate us for no reason, right? Like, if we're really, if everyone's really, really, really hating it constantly, then I guess we would well, change it. Well, people will hate it constantly. The That's time, the whole point. You know, and like, by I him saying that, people the, the will do it. Because now they're going to, now, now they've to told, been told that if they bitch right, and moan excellent. about well, it enough, they're going to change it. Questions, and I did kind of go through chat. I, I know some people still had their own questions. I have strong but, feelings uh, on that in one, In many cases, personally. I feel like I in a way interpreted in a different question so well you need um, a trans gem I think this is a good point to kind of um uh put put a, an end to it an hour and a half is think is a digestible format still for most people anticipating path of exile and path of exile 2. um so perhaps we can uh end on a note thank you so much for for joining us and perhaps uh you can mention when we might expect the next big announcement for poe2 updates or any tidbit of news coming up um, so I don't have any particular date, but I wouldn't think it would be too far into next year when we would be okay. uh, announcing some more stuff. We've, we need, there's, we've got a huge amount of announcements to do next year, um, so uh, yeah, we'll, we probably need to get started fairly early. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Jonathan. I hope uh, I hope it's been a good experience for you, and I hope uh, I hope chat has enjoyed it as well. Uh, we'll we'll get this up for you guys to watch on uh, VOD format. Uh, and if you have any questions, uh, I've seen outside of this interview, I've seen Jonathan personally reply to many people's questions on the POE2 yep. subreddit. So he's very active in the community. If you have any follow-up questions, just throw it out there, there's actually a pretty good chance Jonathan's eyes will hit it. Mm-hmm. Sure. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Take care. See you later. That's it! All right. That's one and a half hour. Must have had a lot. Um... I was supposed to uh, go through this podcast uh, a couple of days ago. I just haven't had time with all the holidays. So I was going to watch it after the stream. We decided to do it on stream with you guys. Uh, basically, tomorrow we're having Jonathan Rogers that you just listened to. And Mark himself, Neon, joining us for um, the ARPD podcast I've launched together with the Dark Microtransaction. You'll watch it live on DM's Twitch channel tomorrow. You can type in more podcast for more info. And it will be available on my YouTube channel moments after um so i need to watch this so we can uh, drop a bunch of other questions that um he's already covered can you help uh no because uh, if i say yes to you i'm gonna have to say yes to everyone else who is asking and i'd like to play this character i'm sorry my guardian not necro dude uh because we ran the numbers and we did some pub and i think the guardian will be very comfortable to play we uh, we will see I ran the numbers without the current League Spectres. With the current League Spectres, the Necker is significantly better. But I wanted to see how this build would perform without the current Spectres to see how that felt. Frevi, who is the god behind uh, Bama builds, is in a position where I would think, or where he would think, that Pathfinder would be better. Now, I am very allergic to doing Pathfinder minion builds. So, if I was going to make one, I, it would be a Necro Guardian. And then I went with Guardian for that reason alone. A DPS Obama. About 250 million in the high budget version right now. Price for 250. I have no idea what the market's looking like right now for those items. I have a uh, previous PUB um, around here somewhere. If I can find it, why isn't it in the list? Let me get you guys previous POB and his video because he's goddamn fucking genius. This is him. This is the build. This is the beauty. It was in the chat earlier. I've always said it. The guy's a fucking genius. And it comes to this build, the Reaper build, Soul West. I've always promoted Prevy and the stuff he does for that. I just think it's that fucking good.
me of how it feels to be possessed with the idea of victory. A king of swords is not is your passion enough to claim a crown. I don't know how his um I have no idea how his Pathfinder version looks like. My understanding, based on what he said, was that he's working on it. That's all I know. That is all I know. We give our fallen heroes more glory than they ever earned in life. Be careful. I'm watching you. I am your whole life. Life will go on. So, what's there to say then? What's there to say? Bye. I think that tomorrow's podcast is gonna be real good. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm thinking. It's gonna be very nice. Very, very exciting. We'll see. Yeah, the PBL is pretty attainable for the damage putting out. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely. It's really good. Play Unleash, it's it's an attack, so you can't use Unleash. Can't use an Unleash on an attack. What's up, honey? What's up? You're tired? You're going to bed? No? Who do you take me for? I'm an adult. I can stay up as long as I want to. Oh, God. Two hours? Why don't you just do like I do? It takes me like five minutes. You didn't. You took you two hours. She's teething? I mean, just, you know, do like I do. It takes five minutes. <laughs> no, I, I'd rather not get punched. I'm sorry, honey. Um, Multi strike is a range attack. Can't multi strike that either. Um, you've been using it frequently, and I know where it is. You're telling me you've been playing on the Switch, and then you placed it somewhere where you forgot where you placed it. It's on top of the. Um, Card game, whatever it's called. Galactic, um... Help me out here. Galactic. The card game. The one I like to play all the time. Galaxy. Gal Galactic. Help me out, chat. Colonies. Well, it, board game then. There's cards involved. Cosmic Encounter, thank you. Cosmic Encounter. On top of that box, you placed a switch last time I saw it. What? Well, you knew it was a board. I knew it was something. <laughs> it's a board game, sorry. Okay. 
you missed the hockey game if you're talking about the canada sweden junior uh, cup no i did not miss that one the one against canada the only one that mattered is uh one of my close friends uh girlfriends is from canada and she was here visiting that's what i did last friday and it was very fun because everyone was rooting for sweden except for her and we seared them out was there a game today or what basically no button i mean i guess the mouse button should count the swiss tonight did we win how did it go Whoop. that's what happens when you play with one hand can't all success yet today to limit it from the tournament Ooh. It's just a shame though sweden played so fucking badly during our power play it was just sad to witness i don't even know what the fuck we were doing i'll be honest we played so much worse we played power play as you would expect uh, during box play that was so bad to see sweden bit swiss in overtime I mean, if we're winning with that horrifically bad team that we have this year, imagine how bad the other teams must be. Like, I'll be honest, Sweden, I've only seen uh, a couple of games so far, and I'm not, I'm not hyped up to watch the rest. I really aren't, because of how fucking bad we're playing. It's a disgrace. I have no idea if it's mirrors here. I'm not experienced with both enough for that. Rex, thanks so much for the two-year sub, man. I appreciate that, dude. I'll be honest. Sweden is playing so badly that, like... It, it's, it's just sad to see. And like, I don't even know how we're winning. Like, how are we winning with that team? We got some really good players in the team, but I mean, it's... The team is shit. We had power play in which we spend more time in our defensive zone than we did in the offensive zone against Canada. Now, let me just point out that that was a long penalty. That was four minutes of power play that we spent in our defensive zone power play by the way that was just i don't even know what's happening anymore sweden used to be so good at hockey and now we got these you know dropped 50 times on the floor when they were babies a day kind of players what happened is that really the best we could get what time the podcast start tomorrow 23 hours. I am sure you will reveal your purpose in time. Still better than film, but that's the whole point. That's the whole point that I'm so question it's so confused about. Like that's how bad we are, but we are winning. We suck in all sport now because we won't allow the kids to compete properly. But I mean we're winning, so the other teams are worse. That's the crazy part. It's not just us. We're actually winning, so the other teams are worse than that. I know what happened. It's insane. I mean, I'm not trying to be funny. It's sad. It's just sad. I used to love watching that shit. And watching it now, it's like... It's worse than watching soccer. You'll fall asleep to that shit. I don't know. In fact, that a lot of development of younger players. That's actually a pretty fair take. Life science actually bringing in logical, re reasonable answers. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that's the case. Maybe that's the answer to my "what the fuck happened" question. You know what, life That's a really good take. That's a really fucking good. That's a base. Soccer? I mean, soccer can be fun sometimes. I mean, for example, when 
fucking Germany managed a zero O Brazil in that World Cup, but I mean, <laughs> what the fuck? So that happened. Or 7 1, sorry, not 7 0. They had to get one in. Courtesy goal. <laughs> Conger! No, 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 no. One of my mods banned Conger right now. Get get that motherfucker out of my channel. That disgusting piece of shit. I Fuck you, Conger. You in this Fuck you, man. You and I will the most I'll have you know, I have played. Thank you. Thank you, Roots. I have you know, I have played this game for a fucking decade. Uh, possibly, just, just want you guys to understand that I have played Path of Exile for a decade. A decade. And I've never seen a mirror drop. I've had multiple, multiple, every league, multiple of mirrors. But I've never seen one drop. And this motherfucker shows up. And drops on in his first fucking league back. <laughs> Welcome to the crew. You didn't unban him? Yeah, let me get him unbanned. There you go. <laughs> you actually gave him 10 minutes, man. What the hell? <laughs> get my boy Congo back, man. <laughs> Release him from prison. Get good. Ban him again, Roots. He, ha he had his opportunity. Ban him, ban him. No, 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 I'm not having that. Here I am, giving him a finger, and he bites off the whole hand. Accept the gift of immortality. <laughs> oh, man. Nightmare is the true... Why are you so in love with death? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You go back longer than you even? Yeah, I know, I know. I noticed, Roots. You're no longer in the chat anymore. You're just hanging out in Congress no, channel. I've noticed. Maybe we need to have a discussion about your salary. Since you're not actively working that much these days. Uh, what am I buying? <laughs> and this league free mirrors no, though? I, yeah, but I'm not I, playing Magic Find this league. I feel like getting a mirror with Magic Find this league is cheating. I have played this game for a fucking decade. I deserve to get a fucking mirror, all right? And I said it before, I don't even know if I loot it if I found one. I just probably would just look at it and let out a big fucking sigh and be like, yo, after a decade, I finally, it finally happened. And then, then I can finally move on with my life. It's been such a dreadful time, man. Streamers drop it. I have played Magic Fight. I have farmed Mage Bloods. I have farmed Headhunters in plural. Never seen a mirror. KG, thanks so much for the 75 months, man. When the new league starts, we don't know yet. We don't know. My return marks judgment for those of hollow faith. You found Krillson? I don't think I found Krillson either. God damn. <laughs> this is basically, right? Oh man, how you doing, Congress? Get seated. Tell me I'll never find where I drop a few days later. Conger, you're not invited to my wedding anymore. I was gonna book you a front row seat, but uh, you're not invited anymore.
Oh man. You hateful scorn. It's it's okay, it's okay, Conger. You know, I, I still said that uh, once I move into the house, which should be in uh three or four weeks or so, then uh, you could come visit. Uh that's still on the table, so I mean you can always um you know, redeem yourself with uh, services, if you know what I mean. It's all good, man. You still have a chance. You have a mirror high, high PUB for a bomber build? Uh, go to Previ. L literally, just go to Previ. I mean, look, look at, look at this. Look at it. Look at it. You're not even looking. Look at it. Oh, I go to Pravi. Uh, somebody link his YouTube uh, in uh, in the channel. Look at it. It's fucking crazy. Oh, let's curse this guy. All right, let's see. Hey, yeah, now they're attacking. There we go. You should have kept your eyes on God. There you go. Thanks, Hikis. She had a picture of an mirror standing much. No, 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 no. God damn you. Where am I even heading? Right. We're doing this. I already gave you a shout out today. Chaka, literally the first thing I said on the stream when I went live. The very first thing. You see how stupid this is to level with? God, God, I might be in love. The, an, an actual bow build. Something's wrong. I'm in love. I mean, are you, are you watching this? Prevy might have finally succeeded in converting me into a bomber lover. like it it's shit well that's not true it's definitely not shit i'll tell you that this is like dp no because m the main source of damage is coming from the minions what are you talking about this is not at all like dp it's actually my minions doing the damage what are you talking about Is it working PAB? Is it working in game? Yes, yes, it is. You can type your summation mark podcast for more info on the podcast tonight. The Catmaster OP with a raid Rooney. Well, thanks so much, Catmaster. Appreciate that a lot, man. Thank you, thank you. Hope you're doing well, dude. You ever, uh, you ever thought about playing uh, Bama build, uh, Catmaster? Because uh, this is genuinely stupid. Like, actually stupid. Hmm, I might have that actually. Let me check. I finish this area. To drop another mirror at yours. <laughs> you're such a dick, man. I'll hold you to it, though, but you're still a dick.
An early POB for this looks way interesting to ignore. I mean, I have a rough draft of it. A rough draft POB. Ooga chakya. <laughs> Let's get some damage going. I don't want to equip a chest piece. Equipping a chest piece means... Uh, oh yeah, I'm only on a four link as well, by the way. Plus do you... Light flat, main damage, something, something, right? Uh, it's a uh, quill rain. <laughs> yes, I'm using a quill rain. Yeah, 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 super low budgets. The world must be cleansed of impurity. Yes, we're using a uh, quill rain in super low budgets. My mana is spent. Oh, nice, dude. What do you do on your mini carry? You consider them passable. Well, it depends on what budget. I mean, if you're doing high budget, I mean, either it's speed farming or it's uber bosses, right? And for um, lower budget, then uh, I'm rather looking at making sure you can do all of the Atlas completion with all of the Void Stones. I like drop from be uh, being saying hey, you're not regular not using incandescent uh... Yeah, so they can drop from even the quest variant of it actually. Ba -ba 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 -ba. They can drop from the quest variant as well. Including the amulets can drop from the quest variant as well as well. So Catmaster, what have you been up to, good sir? Thanks so much for the raid. Welcome in everybody from Catmaster Stream. Yeah, I'll still get the big ugly guy for sure. I'm just not gonna give a shit till I get to uh, the second lab. I have literally no need of the first lab. Alright, let's have a look at what Kaka needed. You said Rusted, and you said Legion, Harby. Uh, let's find out. Uh, uh, Legion, Harby. Let's see. Legion. Harby. Elder. Reliquary. Got gotcha, you, man. You deserve it. Once keep for freedom. I think. Now, where was I? That's a shit flash, though, bro. DJ. Get some damage nodes and keep moving. What in damnation? What in damnation have you done? Uh. What in damnation have I done? This is going to be good, boys. Energy, lightning, and shock resistance. 
And now I got some damage notes coming. Hoorah! Just realize what a weird way it is for me to say hoorah. Because hoorah means whore in Swedish. That's so weird. Never really thought about that. Consensus and Guardian versus Necker for Bomb Mom. I think that that Guardian would suit better for a lower budget early on. I think that crowd performs it in this league for high budgets. For sure. Because of the Spectres. And I think that... Um, I think that past this league, if anyone has the expertise to determine what the best one is, it would be Previ. Once we're done leveling with this build, we're going to showcase or show you guys what Previ has been doing with the Pathfinder version that he considers to be the top choice after this league's over. It'll be very fun to see that. Check that out. Right now, I just want to focus on leveling the build, have a good time, and prep for the podcast. I hope you guys will enjoy it. We're going to talk about PoE too. So, uh, I spoke to DM last night. And uh, the way we're going to do it is going to be very simple. I'll try to cover the more uh, intricate and mechanical questions. And um, he'll try to get the more shallow marketing, new player approach questions. Uh, since I have more experience with the game, we figured that would be a, a good way to approach it. Uh, unlike our previous Tavern Talks, uh, this is going to be more of an interview-esque uh, podcast since it is our opportunity to get a lot of questions out of GGG when it comes to PUE2. Will you ask about minions? Um, yeah, I might. I, I might throw in a question or two. Maybe. If you guys behave, I'll ask about minions. Okay, how about that? If you guys behave. Uh, Diablo 4 has a new season launch reveal coming up soon. And then uh, the next after that is next month. We have Last Epoch. I am in uh, talks with the Last Epoch right now to set up a uh, podcast tavern talk show uh, to um, talk about uh, the Last Epoch launch. So we're getting there. It'll be fun. D4 bad? I mean, hell, D4 is fun for a little bit, and then we go back to PoE. It's very simple. Keep it dead. I don't want that. Might do the expansion for the 70 year demo cost. I have no idea what the expansions uh, plan to be priced at. So, you know, have they announced that yet? I don't think so. That'll be a new class and everything, dude. Exciting times. There is always hope. There is always redemption. Even when we'll see, we'll lost. see. I mean, if I know Blizzard by now, they probably charge us 150 bucks for it. And then someone's gonna be like, nah, 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 Bobby, that's way too fucking expensive. And he's gonna be like, fine, fine, cut it down. 
149. Like, no, 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 Bobby, you, you, you're misunderstanding when we say it's too expensive for the regular mortals on this planet. Now get your shit together and cut it down to 100 bucks. And he's like, ah, oh, fine. Fine, I'll cut it down to 100 bucks then. You fucking broke ass bitches. If they didn't buy Pokemon cookies, they would have been able to afford it. Uh, Forty nine ninety nine. True. Anyways, we'll see how it goes. All jokes aside. Do, 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 do. I'm not sure if fresh meat is like the best way to play this early. I know for a fact we're gonna need some minion damage notes though. God damn. I must have time to a damn good song. This is peak was Warcraft 3. But you're not wrong. Custom games in Warcraft 3, man. Good old days. Holy shit, dude. So this is Destiny Potato Lunatic. The flame of hope may flicker. But it cannot be extinguished. Oh man. Has my faith truly been alive? My god. I'm... Remember. Let's go, boys. Time and tide wait for no man. Time and tide wait for no man. Because the case you played Dota 1, of course. Footman Frenzy. UTD, any most of the TD map, Angel Arena, fuck lot of Angel Arena, uh, Castle Wars, uh, Rabbit vs. Cheap, Enfos, Tower Wars, uh, play Final Fantasy, um, ORPG, uh, a couple of other ORPGs, um, shit, what else did I play? Um, I mean, Pudge Wars and shit like that as well, of course. Warlock. A lot of Warlock. It's pretty goddamn good at that shit. It plays so much, dude. Kota Tag. Yes, I have played Kota Tag. Not a big fan of it, but it was fun. Um, fucking hell, what else did I play? Shitload of TDs. Like an obnoxious amount of TDs. You then all get uh, pants in PoE too. What do you mean with pants? Oh, pants. Uh, no. No, we, we're not getting pants. Sorry, pants is what you want. You can go to the store. This is fantasy. This is a game. This is not like the real world. I hate to bring it. I hate to. Br I hate to break it to you, man. Cooking when? Oh shit! You know that? That reminds me. Not cooking and not cooking stream, but the tattoo stream. I gotta check in with my uh, tattoo artist. If I can find him, where is he? Where the fuck is Ted? Um, where the fuck is Ted? Where is he? Trying to find his text message. I gotta check with him what date we we said. 
Uh, is it this one? No, that's not it. Uh, is it this one? No. Uh, why haven't I added him on my... Oh, I have added him. There he is. Um... There, I checked in which date we said. Hockey monstrosity for love that is holy. There is a way to silence it and hide out. Uh, yes, yes, there is, Josa. You can uh, mute the entirety of the fucking sound, or you can just uh, not be in your hideout and go to town. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's, your, that's your choices. That's your options. Cooking quest after the fishing quest. Gem TD biz. Oh man, Gem TD was amazing. But honestly, the best TD I have ever seen has been UTD. UTD. You know, it's funny. I know for a fact Grimroll has been working on a TD game. I was supposed to get access to uh, do some alpha testing for him. But then he never... Um, he never got back to me with, uh, with info. UTD is the best tower defense map I have ever played. Turn out sounds for minions. Legion TD was amazing as well, for sure. So many fantastic TD games, dude. It's crazy. By now, Warcraft 3. You see, back in my day when I used to, when I played games during Warcraft 3, you know what I did? I play Walker 3 custom games and I played Tibia. Walker 3 custom games and Tibia. The world crumbles. I must gather the pieces. God damn it, dude. We actually started up the community again for uh, Tibia. I know I talked about it before quite a lot, actually. We actually are playing with, uh, with the community. In, uh, in TV right now. Off stream though. Maybe I should stream that someday on my alt account at some point. That could be fun. You guys want to check it out when we do some uh, some proper team hunts or something. That'd be real fun to do. Hello, a private corpse and be the vendor. Doesn't matter what the level of the corpse is. The, the corpse level does not matter whatsoever. I don't know why people think that matters. Corpse levels don't matter. The Ray Spectre gem will dictate the level of the minion when you race it. So you can go to Act 1 and bring out the lowest level Spectre unit you can find. But your Spectre gem will change that monster level to whatever level the Spectre gem is saying that it is. Question what level can I no, did it, sorry. Uh why is Grimo not doing content? I don't know, busy with real life, I guess. You gotta keep in mind being a content creator is a goddamn grind. Unless you're sitting on thousands of viewers. There's a shitload of work you gotta put in on the side. I'm mean, not saying you don't have to put in a lot of work if you have shit if you have thousands of viewers. You're saying that the salary or the pay you get is a huge difference. Huge difference when you have a few thousand viewers compared to having below that. There's a reason I'm able to do this full time, and that is not because I sit on thousands of viewers. Because I don't realize, well, we do sit on thousands of viewers on League Launches, to be fair. But it's because you guys are supporting this stream at an insane rate. I mean, just look at the sub counts. We hit well over 3,000 subs during uh, the League Launch month. So, 
Like I said, I can't do this full time if it wasn't for the support you guys provide. That plus my written guides. So, I mean, yeah, it, is, it just is what it is. Maybe it's basically real life. You good card as well, sir. Well, I appreciate that. I, I literally can't do what I do if it wasn't for you guys subscribing the way you guys are and donations and gifted subs and shit like that. So, I've said this before. Like, I am so grateful for the kind of community that we have that allows me to do this. I went from a mechanical engineer job to doing this. Kind of crazy. Speaking of, uh, of money, actually. We are currently making preparations for uh, building the, uh, the isolation and everything I need for the streamer house. Uh, no, but I have a rough draft PUB. So, for those of you who missed it, thanks to you guys and the uh, support you guys provide, I am now uh, going to have to pay double rent for two months. Which sucks dick, but it's a good thing. Because the reason why is because uh, I bought a house for me and my family. Thanks to you guys. Thank you. And in this house, or outside the house, there's another property, an in-law suite. Which will be my streamer cuck shed. Evil has and today I started making preparations for uh, basically sound isolating the entire living shit out of that place so I can scream in there without disturbing the neighbors. And I just confirmed with the current owners that owns the house for the, the next three weeks to uh, that allows us to start uh, that building process uh, can start uh, one week before I get access to the house. So that's uh, getting that it's, it's starting. The process is getting started. And then uh, if that goes well, I should be moving the weekend of the 19th of January. I am very, very, very excited for this. More sleep streams. Well, the thing is with this cuck shed, is that uh, there will be, um, there is a sleeping loft inside the streamer house. Um, a fully functional bathroom with a shower and everything and a fully functional kitchen. So I could literally live there, which is probably what's exactly what's going to happen. And then I'll maybe get to visit my house every now and then. So there's, there's that. Uh, but that's the plan. So I'm currently making some stuff in preparation for that. And um, this Saturday, I'm going to go through all the ISP shit and the contracts and yada yada and all that shit. It's going down. You, you don't have to bother Hannah with streaming. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, the thing is, we, we talked about that. So during league launches and whatnot, uh, no, we're going to have mattresses in the sleeping loft. They're, they're, like there's a there's a loft in in the uh, streamer house, so I can actually have my own like little sleeping area. So during the launches or if we have long stream sessions or I have to sleep during the day or something, then I can literally be there. So another cam set. Okay, okay. So anyways, uh, we're gonna have that available, and I'm very excited for it. The only thing that I'm concerned about is this month is that we are starting the building process and uh, double rent for the apartment and everything is kicking in this month. And this month is like we may, might get a Diablo 4 launch at the end of the month or early February. So, um, yeah, that's happening. Yeah, it's called Atafal, so it's correct. Atafal. Which means I'm gonna I'm need you guys to uh, to uh, not kill me. What the fuck? I'm gonna need you guys to uh, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the hit the fucking comment section below. Wait, uh, sorry, Twitch. Um, I'm a, yeah, I'm gonna need you guys to uh, to hit me up with them subs. That's what that's what I'm gonna need. They really will uh, go into the hut and come out a week later. Well, pretty much.
Our final At least that's the plan. Its first I'm very excited though. It's, it's gonna be really cool. I think credit is worth something for absolution to some degree. I, I wouldn't keep it personally, but it, it is worth something. The problem is that those mods are very few people that would even care about searching for that. <laughs> Nanny cam. Are you playing Gala whenever it happens? Of course, I do it all the time. I do it all the time, man. Gauntlet is how I get my hardcore fix. Like, I used to race in this game for five years straight. So, yes, a gauntlet is my way to get my uh, hardcore fix out of my system. Uh, you mean the descent races? Yeah, they stopped all the seasonal races. It was so fun mid -league. Yeah, I know. I love it as well, dude. It was good times. Had you not barred the way the first time? I love the seasonal um, alt artwork rewards as well. This shit was good. Anyways, we're doing this as we're prepping for the podcast. Why does it say I'm not a sub? It says for me. Because you're a four year sub to me. How about specific Deli Orb in bulk? It only helps a bit, but it's only a full stash tab sale. Uh, I don't know. I would have said it at TFT, so if that doesn't help you, I don't know why. I don't know why, man. But I have ads at the moment, too. What the fuck? Yeah, if I have clear cookers or something, you should not be seeing ads. You should not be seeing ads. What the fuck? No, 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 don't tell me you're getting ads as a fucking sub, that, no, no. I know Twitch is greedy, but, you know, no, don't fucking scare me like that, dude. That should never happen. It's crazy. That's weird. That's really weird. It raise personal skill uh, level. Ah, I mean, you got a lot of uniques that you don't get normally from that, though. <clears throat> While you, time and tide wait for nephew. Good work. With another. Farewell. Uh, where's the rest of my damage? Let's go for duration. Do, 
Do best baby build starter for the moment. Uh, SRS probably or Zoom Answer. Type exclamation mark uh, guide and check out the Golem. Uh, sorry, the SRS uh, Elemental version or the Poison SRS or the Zoom Answer. All three of them will be great for you. Anytime, man. Anytime, dude. The descent races were fucking fantastic, though. I'm not gonna lie. Loved them, dude. So good. I'm buying guns, prismatic guns have different max limits. That is my understanding, yes. Uh, I have no idea. I don't know. Is I haven't even bothered looking into that. I'm using a quill rain with this build, man. A genuinely using a quill rain. Uh, running nice or shit. That's not you. It's them. Trust me. His time has almost come. Just check craft of exile. Uh, is this though? Craft the XL, see if you can play around with it for there. That would be my recommendation. You got to keep in mind that in, in the state that you have it right now, you got uh, two prefixes and you get a locked suffix already. So you could do prefix camp a change and then craft, depending on what kind of mods you're looking to get. You could meta craft that a lot. You can also guarantee a uh, level of um, bow gems as well if you want to, right? Uh, there's a pinned message in the chat right now that'll tell you when it starts. You can also type exclamation mark podcast to get more info. Well, gold has already been stated at Exacon with what it's gonna do. I can't sub. That's really weird. Can somebody gift Kaka sub? See what happens. Anyone that can gift Kaka sub? We need to get our mod sorted, boys. This is this is a bad look, boys. We gotta fix this. We need a we need an oiler or a, or a contract chiller in the chat. Paid actor. It says he's already sub because he looks sub to me. That's why I'm so confused with what what's happening to him. Yeah, it says sub to me as well. To what? Yeah, I don't know what to do, Kakya. Yeah. So I walk every sure. Clearly, we even have people trying to give. Thanks for trying, guys. Appreciate it. I don't know what's happening. Thanks for trying, boys. I'll do gold, do other than buying gear. It will only be buying gear. It will only be buying gear. That was the idea of it. Hey, y'all, where's DM? Uh, busy. He will show up soon. And then him and I are gonna hang out for a bit before the, uh, before the shit goes live, boys. Gonna have a good time today. Twitch is getting greedy. Twitch has always been greedy. They just didn't show it that much till, uh, last few years. Kinda sad, but you know what? I'm at, I'm at the point where I can't change what they do. And I just dislike the way they handle things. And, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna try not to give too much of a shit about it. I have an amazing community here. I got you guys. So, Twitch gave me you guys. And the community we built together. So, 
I'm just gonna be happy with that despite their greed. That's how I feel. Though I might just stream as evolved and how chill it's, be it's became. You're telling me I wasn't chill before? Was he that bad before? Holy shit. I didn't know, man. <laughs> I had no idea, dude. Does Bait have an NDA or a stream is allowed to stream it? Uh, we don't know yet. They... Jonathan Rogers was on a show together with uh, Kriparian like recently. Shit. And in there he said that when it comes to the beta, it was very More likely to be something similar to last beta see. they had. So the That's all we know about that. We're not gonna we're not gonna ask questions that are already been answered. And uh, for those of you who don't know what the Tavern Talk podcast is all about, it's basically us having a friendly conversation with a friend uh, that we invite, and then we're going to have a very casual, lean back conversation where we only have one topic, and that topic being the main game that we're talking about. And then there's no other structure to the podcast whatsoever. We wanted to uh, maintain this as well for the show at all times, um, where the only topic today is going to be PUE2. However, we do recognize the fact that people are expecting uh, us to treat this more of an interview, because this gives us the opportunity to ask some questions to get some answers regarding PUE2. So we will maintain the approach of it being a very casual, semi-non-structured approach, but this time being semi non-structured. So we do have a handful of questions lined up. Uh, we checked with the chat yesterday to get a couple questions for the community as well. So we do have a handful of questions from the community. And uh, we're going to try to do some, um, go through a couple of questions. Uh, and you treat it more of an interview-esque uh, show this time. Uh, granted, because of the fact that we do have this possibility to ask some questions. But we're going to try to keep it as uh, lean back as possible. Uh, no, I, I explicitly removed any questions that had anything to do with Kaka. Those questions have been uh, manually discarded. So strong. And will never, never see the light of day. Dedicated. A man like Obviously. I'm not crazy, Kaka. You're a gift, don't you see? People who spell out my peer are pretty much guaranteed to get into beta. Really? We are both so I don't know about that. If I rephrase, ah, uh, no, it's too late. To apologize. Too late. Anyways. I mean, all of your questions included the comments. Destroy PoE, destroy GDG, fuck the company because they did one thing or another that you didn't like. I'm not sure if that would be a good way to ask questions in a professional manner. <clears throat> I must have time to gather my will. Yes, I mean, if you spend money in the game, I mean, that makes sense to me. If you supported the game financially, that you would get access. <clears throat> oh, fuck me, I was reading chat. Hey man, have you been? I'm um, doing all right, man. How you doing? I am moving into uh, my house in like three weeks. If everything goes well, I'll be moving in in three weeks. So that's something of the. That's so cool, dude. Actually, super excited. How students got it? Yes. Yes, indeedy. We are uh, currently, I uh, today started the process of planning the, uh, 
the planning the process of building and isolating the um the streamer cock shed i also got the uh the price uh the price range for it for how much that's gonna cost uh that was less exciting uh but yeah so that's happening the other part were very exciting though the other part was very very exciting so uh, i'll just have, i'll be happy with that dude i am so excited it's gonna be so much fun Well, I do live north of Malmo. Oh, shit, sorry. I do live north of Malmo. So that's fine. Have you chosen a brand power tools yet? I mean, a home gives you the need to use to, uh, to load out your uh, your toolbox. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to wait with those things. Isentropic Mike, when I say that I am skinned broke, I mean it. We have a double rent coming up and I managed to crash the car the day before uh, Christmas. So, um, I, yeah. That's the only thing that I'm uh, that I'm literally concerned about is that um, as I crashed the car literally the day before Christmas, we're like uh, pretty pretty tight on the financial front right now, <laughs> pretty fucking tight, and it's too late to uh, to change anything. So we're uh, we're just gonna have to we fucking pray everything works out at this point. <laughs> nobody uh, nobody got injured though. The only the only problem was with the with the car accident was that it was my fault, so I have to pay for it. It's my fault. Does Emmett work with dot pills since you don't kill? No, it works with dot pills. Dot kills, even minion kills counts as the player's kills. Player, uh, well, for Maddie finds that so this counts as your kills. So if you had nobody get hurt, yeah. Now I, I mean it could be worse, but um, gotta fix the car though. Anyways, that happened. That happened. So when I say I'm gonna need you guys to sub, I'm I'm not joking, right? Let, let's just put it that way. I'm not I'm not joking. I mean I meant every word. I genuinely meant every word. Me and Anna stopped ordering Turn food as well. Till next time, shall we greetings? I don't remember last time I ordered food. It's been that long. It's been that long. Holding on to every fucking dime. I even snooze less. My nicotine. It's why I've been a grumpy motherfucker lately. Welcome to the crew. Holding on to every fucking penny right now. Thank you so much. Anomaly for the three months, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate that support a lot, man. Thank you. I mean, we have money. It's not that. It's like, I have no idea about all of these weird new expenses that I've never experienced before because it's our first time owning a house. So what we're doing is we're being very, very careful to make sure that there is that there is a, you know, an actual guaranteed situation where we don't don't end up in a in a problematic situation. That's why we're being extremely careful. 
You see, I've I've gone from living month to month from salaries for a very long time to finally not being in that position, and I don't ever, ever, ever want to go back to that. So that's why we're being extremely careful. Thank you so much, Subdoll, with the 10 gifts, man. I appreciate that very much, man. Thank you so much, dude. Now, like, I, I've been down... I've, I've been there for way too long, so... um, Doing everything we can to avoid that from ever happening again. So, well, because of the car crash and everything, we're... um, We're being extremely careful. That's the only thing. I'm, sh I'm sure it'll be fine. Like, I'm sure. I'm confident. It's just that I don't know to be able to, I'm not I don't know enough to guarantee it. And since I can't guarantee it, I'm concerned. And that makes me want to rather take steps towards preventing such a situation from occurring now rather than finding myself in a bad spot later. You know what I mean? It's called growing up, I've heard, but I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. You know, have water, storm down, air conditioning, it's like, yeah, the buffer of that, you'll be fine. But that's, that's the thing, like, the buffer is disappearing because of the accident and shit like that. With the move and the double rent. And the fact that I changed my company form, um, 1st of December as well. I no longer have my own company, actually. Kinda crazy. I've been streaming for, uh, nine and a half years. A little more than that, almost a decade. And I no longer have my own company anymore. That's kind of crazy. Instead, I am now... Uh, I'm now employed. By a company that I own. All the shares in. So I am now a CEO. Yeah. Easily Sounds good, right? Hide, Sounds really good. <laughs> Any opinion on the Bomber Mini Ball? I think it's amazing so far. <clears throat> gotta do that for the taxes yes but the funny thing is the united forge here in sweden we um uh it's gonna cost me more now i will benefit a lot from this from this move change uh january 2025 is that's when i um what, can ha what happens then is I get to pay out a dividend from the company to myself, upon which I will pay 20% taxes on and no employment fees on the dividends. Now, that's where I benefit a fuckload of money on it. So, till then, it's going to be a little bit annoying. So, slightly worse now, and then once the dividend kicks in, then uh, it's going to be very, very beneficial for what I've done now. That was the whole plan. So the funny thing is, actually, I'm going to pause the music for this. So the funny thing is, we started looking at houses, right? And um, without going too much into detail, the plan for us was that we were going to look at houses and then aim to buy one, you know, February, March, maybe April next year. That was our plan. That way I could do the change of the company and have a capital in the company without any, you know, without stressing or anything. And... Um, what happened was that the house that we bought, they lowered the price on it. The booty. Just wanted to say thank you for the poison anime weapon build smooth progression and almost done with all the upgrades for high budget most currency I've ever invested into a build before <laughs> myself absolutely loving it and working great for my blight farm. Oh man, you, you were doing so well till you said blight. I appreciate the donor though. Why would you say blight in that sentence? It was it, it was going so well that you had to say blight, really? Come on, man. Thanks so much, okay. You said five euros though. I appreciate that, man. You know what? You know what, sir? I'm gonna take that dono and I'm gonna put that in my bra. There we go. Thanks so much, dude, for the support. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. Um, so anyways, we were supposed to buy a house like early next year, but the house that we did buy. They lower the price on it, and uh, it's uh, the previous owners, they had uh, a divorce, and uh, they wanted to get rid of the house quickly. So the money we paid for the house is significantly lower than what the house is actually worth. We're getting a house that has 200 square meters to live in, two floors. There's a pool, 
there's a wooden deck there's a um jacuzzi and there's a in-law suite for the streamer house and we're getting this for a ridiculously good price which is why we said you know what we're just gonna have to find a way to solve this because if we don't buy this someone else will so that's why we uh just went on it so we've we've basically just thrown ourselves off the fucking cliff now and we're gonna pray the fucking wings are holding because god damn this house is gonna be amazing i tell you this much i would not have been able to afford this house if we were buying this in a couple months from now or if we had to pay the actual price for it that's how crazy this is so um we're just going for it. oh Gotta stop reading chat. We're um we're just going for it. It's fucking amazing. Absolutely fucking amazing. Rana Cash. We'll do this. How old are you? I am 32, 32, yes, 32, uh, 33 in March. There we go. Hey Gazzy, first I want to thank you for all minion content over all these years. Thank You've you. inspired many of us to push the limits. Mage Skelly's less than three, this may huh. be too much to ask for, but is there a chance to bring Bex to the tavern talk one day? I miss her. Okay, so Bex fucking trolled me. So... I've been trying to push Bex into uh, joining us on a podcast for, I don't know, four fucking years, dude. Four years to try to push her to do it, because I know the community would love it if she did. So at ExileCon, I'm like, yo, Bex, you know what? I've had enough of trying to persuade you to join the podcast. So I'm just going to put it this way. After ExileCon... You're going to be on the show. That I just told her straight up. You're going to be on the show, Bex. You're going to join. At least an hour. That's all I'm asking. And she just looked at me. And she said. Fine. Let's do it, Gassy. Let's do it. Let's join it. And then. She literally announced. That she's quitting the job. And moving over to work for Riot. And all I get in my inbox is a kappa. Fuck, man. Yeah, I, I made Bix quit. I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, yeah, I know I love Bix. She's fucking amazing, dude. But no, I tried. Thanks to my Sejin for the five-year dono, man. I appreciate it. No, I, I tried. I tried a lot, actually. And I finally got her to say yes. But no. She said yes just to fuck with me because she already knew she was quitting. God damn it. Oh, man. She just had to fuck with me one more time. So that happened. But no, I, I, did, I did try. I, I, I did genuinely try to, to get her on uh, for the podcast. Multiple times over. Uh, I am not very familiar with Corrupting Fever. No, maybe someone in chat is to help you answer, answer your questions. Uh, I only have a rough draft. Podcast tonight, by the way, I am currently waiting for a DM to uh, to uh, get ready and then we're gonna hang out on Discord a little bit Chit chat and prep and just hang out till uh, till the show starts tonight. That's the plan until then I'm just gonna level this build and uh, Have a good time, but uh, yeah, no, that's that's the story of the Beck situation 
That's how to get her on for a show and um Oh man. <laughs> nah, she she's amazing. She really is. But I, I think I, I I think we all can agree that we all miss her. We got a new community manager though. We got Mr. Nick. Nick himself, boys. Wait, did I get all the flyers? I did, deliver them, and we're good. We start at 9.30 p.m. CET. It is currently 5 p.m. A little over 5 p.m. actually. You know we're still using a four link, right? I have twink gear, but I'm still on a four link doing this damage, by the way. You done with the Pathfinder version yet? So uh, I don't I'm not sure if he's done, but he's being he's currently test running it. I have some footage he sent me that I haven't looked at yet. That I'm gonna show you guys when I'm done leveling this build through the campaign. I wanted to upload this to YouTube though. The leveling process that we're doing right now. So I don't want to stop to watch the videos mid-run. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get to Act 10 and finish that. And then once that's done, then we'll check out the, the footage as Privy has been supplying me for the Pathfinder testing. Very exciting to show you. Like, Previ has always been delivering the highest quality of content. He does focus a little higher budget content stuff, though. Which is for sure, but I want to focus on the low body then, which is why I'm trying uh, test running the Guardian version right now. I have seen this to see how that feels. Mama Guardian, yeah, like I'm not a fan of the Pathfinder approach, which is what Previ is gonna go for. So I'll take a look at it to see if there's anything that he's doing that we could potentially incorporate to a Necro or a Guardian version. In the current league, because of the Spectres, the Necro is definitely better uh, due to the Wrath Auras. But outside of that, I think that the Guardian will be very, very good for a tri Ellie run um, after the league is... Uh, the, after the Spectres are gone, which is why I'm test running this as a Guardian. We will obviously be using the new Spectres. I mean, come on. Of course we are. Uh, but one step at a time. We're going to start with this first. I just want to make sure this shit works after this league is over as well. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Noix with a 23 month resub. Thank you so much for support, man. Appreciate that, dude. Thank you, thank you. Oh, yeah, no. Uh, with all the car accident and the uh, the house and everything, I do appreciate all the donors and all the subs, man, very much. So thank you so much, everybody, for all the support. I, um, I literally can't do what I do without you guys, so thank you so much for all the support you guys provide to this channel. It, it truly means a lot to me. Thank you. <laughs> Speaking of the devil, Stinkfish coming in as well. And there's a hype train coming in. Ooh. What's up, Big Nizzy? Do you remember to be a written Bama guide? Uh, possibly. Possibly. I gotta play test a bit more, though. It all depends on how this build feels and goes. And then I was thinking of getting this to a comfortable state later. And then once that is done, I was thinking of doing the, the, um, I was thinking of doing the, uh, what's the space? Um, the chal, sorry, the challenges on this character, because there's a really nice, uh, challenge reward at 38 challenges with a purple, uh, helmet effect, like the crucible one for your life, pla uh, bar, but purple. And I really want that one. Yep. Now I need to challenge. I know. I had the exact same reaction, dude. I genuinely had the exact same reaction, man. Ticket to do. Ticket to do. Ticket to do. 
I had the exact same reaction, man. Stinkfish dropping a three bomb in the channel as well. Well, spank you, thank you, sir. That spank you is a very gentle yet extremely seductive spank. But thank you so much, dude. Three bomb in the channel, dudes. Some more light. Bama, same as regular minions. Correct. Mates buzz, though. Mm. Lots of defense in that. A lot of defense in that. But by a charm with skills, fine initial projectile, will uh, this affect higher specters too? No. It will not. It will only affect you as a player because it doesn't say that it applies to minions and therefore you can safely assume that it does not apply to minions. Ooh, what the hell? Goddamn yawning. Gonna wake up for the show, man. <laughs> you gonna eat him or what? Hello? No? Not even a sender yet. Are you doing this damage? Oh, and I'm on a four link. Yes, I've been lazy with the ascension. I'm sorry. Like, the, normally with a Guardian, you would get the first lab, and then the first lab will carry you into red tier maps, or yellow at least, right? This shit is so good. I don't even use it. I am still unascended. Literally still as unascended, man. Okay, Sai might be the player. We can buy Necro Pathfinder. Nah, it's not worth it in my opinion. I think that after the Spectres are gone, the benefits of the Tri Herald benefits of Elemental Relic is actually going to be really fucking good. There's also why I think this is so good on uh, Guardian for the lower budget. Bone Armor is uh, deliberate for a reason. Uh, I mean, you get a ton of damage from not running the Bone Armor. You can if you want to for more defenses, of course.
a second. Give me a second. There's an egg. Go with courage. Whalem. So, always keep your eyes on the horizon. Uh, what the fuck are we specking at this point? I think I should have taken these nodes earlier. I guess we pick up some light nodes before. No, wait, we can do this. How much is it? 38 mana. Let's do life and let's do the life cost and then the reservation. We'll pick up purity of elements. I think that's the play. Second. Good telecorder. Don't do anything I would. Don't remember you must die. Here we go. Time is a podcast. Got the answer perfect. It seems it is my penance to endure all the filths of this world. Better care of water and damage other minions. What about it? The buff effect scales other minions, yes. Two seconds. There you go. Uh, wish mechanic or core? Uh, no. No, no, no. Trust me, I think everybody wants to, but it's not gonna happen. It's way too good. Ah, shit, it's way too good. this one more node and we'll pick up purity of elements i think i should have done that sooner especially i think that the leveling tree for this would definitely be doing that because you're not gonna have like twink gear right bronze lith nope i th i think that for higher buddy that would just go with um i'll be honest i would literally just go with uh 
fourth vow divine flesh setup to be honest it's what uh previ was doing in his verses as well it's just too, so much defenses from doing that and then having modifiers like fish damage taken as alley which is then mitigated through chaos rest and divine flush so you get such insane amounts of the ehp from doing that without re without re relying on uh, on block or conditional damage uh, mitigating sources and if you get yourself a proper divine uh sorry a timeless jewel you can get one that gives you um i think it's called automated instigating or something like that that gives you percent armor and flat percent damage mitigations that unaffected by the hard hits of armor the the way armor damage the, the way armor mitigates damage is lowered by the harder the hit the, the harder the hit it is the less it mitigates and you can get percent flat percent damage mitigation modifiers i'm gonna say all of this one more time in a much easier way so people will understand what the fuck i'm saying there is a notable from the timeless jewel that gives you percent increase of armor now percent armor or armor mitigation will mitigate damage taken from physical hits to a certain degree but the way that is scaled is different depending on how hard the actual damage is hitting so the harder the physical damage that you're taking is hitting for the less percent mitigating is coming from your armor based of that which is kind of stupid but that's how it works that node also gives a percent damage mitigation from physical damage taken from hits. That percent is unaffected by the amount of damage that, uh, the damage from, that you're mitigating is doing. I can't say it in a more simple way. It's a good node and you can get it from the Timeless Jewel. Jesus. Can I get ready to take it as Ali alone is good enough on its own? No. Uh, yes. Yes, it is. But isn't the damage that you take, they're converting to elemental damage, and then isn't that then taken through fourth bow and divine fl yeah! Divine flesh. Isn't that then taken as chaos in that sequence? I didn't actually know that. Thank you for correcting me. I did not know that. I didn't actually know that. Thank you. I was literally under the impression that was how it worked. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's uh, do this. And go to story. One of his characters that was supposed to be mortal died to that before. Oh. Well, there you have it, then. I need triple blue and a green. Do I have a new pair of gloves? Oh, it's right there. Brilliant. Die, die tonight. Or dynamite, actually. My bad. Uh, how about we just snag this ring for lulz? Why am I even using this? Great. This is perfect. Fire lightning. Nah. We will do it this way. And then we're going to pick up this, I think, for the extra rest. Um, before we go crit. We can get some lightning rest right there, though. Let's do that. Uh, Where else I going? Did I take the portal? I did, right? Well, PoE is not very known for being super uh, optimized, though. When's the podcast? Type is my my podcast. It's 
9.30 CET. Three thousand subs. Yes, that counts the subs for the last thirty days, which means that we had we reached over three thousand subs during December. Absolutely crazy. Considering the fact that I'm moving to a house, uh, that's very needed. I wonder what the goal is uh, for um, what we're gonna set up for goal this league. You see, here's the thing: my tattoo artist is coming over to. Um, I wonder if that's him responding. Give me a second. So, um, we hit the sub goal, right? We're going to be uh, having my tattoo artist coming over to my place here. And he's going to do the uh, final tattoo session on my sleeve, which is an Arakali human form inspired sleeve tattoo. And we have one more session on that tattoo. Yeah, let me show you, boys. Let me show you, boys. So we got... um. Our Kali Spang spider tattoo as a sleeve. And we got our Kali right here. And uh, we have uh, my old spider, we have some stencils done, right? So we have this entire section left and uh, a couple of things on the, on the inside that needs to be done. So this part up here is getting, um, is getting finished live on stream in this room on stream by my tattoo artist, Ted. If you want to check him out, type your space mark, Ted. So we're going to do that. Now, I know for a fact that uh, he's, uh, he's told me that he would be uh, thinking, he th said it would be fun if I tattooed like a small tattoo on him. And that he'd be down for letting me do that, like on his, uh, on his foot or something. And I've never hold a tattoo uh, uh, pen before. So we were thinking maybe we set up some weird sub goal this month that I do that on, but I'm currently texting my uh, texting Ted right now to see when we're going to do this. Is that something you guys would like to say? Because Ted is fucking amazing, by the way. He's such a cool dude. You guys haven't checked him out. Type exclamation mark Ted and check out his work. He's fantastic. Anyway, I can draw a dick butt. Like, uh, nice, but the fear of spiders is too bad. Then now I kept looking. <laughs> you chorky sell me out. Yup. That's what I'm saying. So, um. Anyways. The problem with that is that if. If we are going to do this this Saturday. Is I'm, I'm still checking with him when we're going to do it. It would have to be like afternoon if it's this Saturday, though. Evening time, even. Time to book a flight for sure. Do you see 11 TCD map farm with an angle of minions to do it for you? Any of the mini builds I have in a higher budget will do that without problems. So if you want to juice it up, just mack up a little bit of investment, you're done. So really, that it's, it really is that simple. What was I specking? Right, I took some rest. And we'll do this then. Uh, then you'll price it to whatever you think it's worth. I don't do price checks. But yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll check with him. Um... 
Give me a second. Let's see what he wrote. Um... So I'll see what he says. I know, like the only thing I like, I don't know how we're gonna set up a sub goal for it, because the sub goal, the sub count you see on screen counts the subs for the last 30 days. Yes, I'm doing a uh, low buddy. Here's a rough draft of it. It's probably it probably needs some changes though. But I'll, I mean, I'll check with him. I think that could be real fun. So once we once we have established a date, we could set up a sub goal for it, for what we're gonna do. I mean, we could do something simple, you know. If it's uh, say it's this Saturday, then we can say uh, I don't know. Just spitballing, but let's say that if it is this Saturday, then we can say we're on 3,056 subs right now. If the sub count uh, hits 3.5k, then we'll do it. We could do something like that. That could work. And if it's the Saturday after, then we can have a little higher, I guess. We could do something. Like that. I gotta double check, though, because I don't want to have it in a situation where the sub count goes down too much base of the subs in the last 30 days right it's always going to be a race towards that on us on after a league launch month though that's assuming you guys want that to be a thing though then we'll definitely do it i think that could be real cool the thing is if you guys like this and you guys like the the stream tat the streaming of the tattoo session i want to do some stuff with my tribals as well and then we can uh, we can actually keep doing it Been strong for it, dead, he's dead, and crazy, you know, six deep invested. That's fair. Uh, so, I can't do that, um, uh, J Rock. I've already looked into ways to sort in that. The only thing I can do is count new subs. The problem when they do that is that it doesn't include resubs or people that have multi month sub subs either. So, that would also be in, you know, that would be unfair. I think it's really stupid that there isn't a better system for that to uh, that works in my opinion is it's rather frustrating yeah i'd have to count manually but then i have to sit and update the shit manually as well so i don't mind the whole race against the the thingy because that just means that the sooner we hit the goal the better so i don't mind that the only problem is if we have like super big goals that it can be a bit frustrating so yeah, i think it's fine but I, I don't know what date it is. I just sent a message over to Ted and uh, we'll see what he says. One step at a time. I mean, I can literally check right now how many subs we had the first week of December. I can literally do that quite quickly, actually. Uh, let's see. Custom. December month. The first week. Let's say the first eight days of December. On the 8th of December, we had a lot of subs. Before that, it wasn't that much. So I'm assuming 8th of January is going to be a pretty big drop. And if we do it this Saturday, we only have four days. Four days to hit the goal. If we do it this Saturday. So I'm just going to wait for him to respond. If it is, then it's going to be very easy to set the goal. Tell me something. Don't do anything I would. And I'll just have to manually adjust the goal if I have to, or uh, base it if it's after that. EB setup, the enemy weapon self-reflection worth. Uh, I don't think it is, no, personally at least. I really don't. League start was the 8th, wasn't it? Yes, and we had the stream start, or the scam train uh, leak start uh, thingy. So on, uh, on the 8th of January, we hit 600 subs. 
which means that the i'm assuming six or sorry the eighth or the ninth this month we're gonna drop 600 subs from that count unless we maintain it and you guys drop another 600 subs <laughs> So, uh, is the base percent on Awake Beauty Trade price check important? Uh, that depends. If it's 100% of the item where that is an attractive modifier, then yes. Must have time to gather my will. Base percentile refers to the uh, base roll of your energy shield armor or evasion. So, for example, Gold Rim has 19 to 27, and I have a 26, so this is a 90 something percentile. Now, it doesn't matter on a gold room, obviously. Using Quill Rain. Skin looks like Voltaxic Rift. Oh, it's a Quill Rain. It is a Quill Rain. I don't think percent can matters on that one personally. I don't know though. I doubt it. If I priced it, I wouldn't include the, the percentile myself, at least. If that helps. <clears throat> I mean, we'll see. Can I get my damage? Thank you. Give me a second, he responded. Um... Okay, so schedule-wise, we're going to be able to put it up earliest around uh, early February then. I just got conf confirmed from uh, from Ted now. The only weekend he can, I'm going to be busy this month. So we have to do it from the new house. Thanks to our Chaos Experts and Nacho Angie for the subs. Appreciate you both. Thank you, thank you. So what we could do is we could set a sub goal to stay above a certain sub goal by the end of the month. We could do that. That's normally easier as well. 
Because then every time we drop below, then we have to, you know, work ourselves, uh, work it way back up again. So we could, that's a, that's a fun sub goal that we could do, actually. So that will work. I'm just going to check with him so everything is confirmed and good to go. Is that the Chris Wilson, by the way? Is he trying to step down from being the face of the company? I think he's just busy with other things. And Jonathan and Mark wants to take a step into the light when it comes to the PUE to focus, I'm assuming. I think he's just good. I like it. There's no way Chris could be able to do everything himself. Himself, right? Sith Lords of PUE are collaborating. I mean, they have PUE 1 and PUE 2, so yeah, I know for sure. Um, bum, bum. What am I specking? I forgot what I'm looking for. Crit notes, I guess, or more defensive notes. I think we'll do defensive notes, actually, before we do crits. So let's get some region notes and then log it out. Regal Power. What's up, dude? I'm doing all right, man. Just uh, chilling, waiting for a DM to show up, and then uh, we're just going to hang out and wait for the prep for the podcast. Having a good time, boys. Stay out of the Junk. Shadows. And then we do the region route for armor. <clears throat> oh, yeah, for sure. We'll see. We'll see. I'm just very happy about it because I'm going to be able to make guides for both games. That's going to be very fun to do. Uh, play tested mage skeletons. Yes, I have a guide updated for it as well. Dragon Dew, type information mark guide and uh, check it out. Mage skeleton is slightly underperforming though compared to um, other mini builds right now. It's still playable, it's perfectly fine. It's just underperforming, especially on the single target damage front. It's getting carried by Vol Summer skeletons quite a lot early on, so do keep that in mind. Now, it's a fun playstyle, but. Uh, a low damage these days in my opinion still when i play it it's perfectly fine to do so and it's definitely functional at least started with the last league and there's basically no changes to this one and the share of mine straight running guys for you p1 p2 and d3 <laughs> you do that man regal power dropping the prime sub and starting the scam train baby thank you so much man appreciate that dude choo choo Saku with the uh, Tibia comments. You guys want to join us in playing Tibia, by the way? We get so many people from our community playing now. It's absolutely fantastic. Love it. I think what we need now is uh, more um, more EKs. High level EKs. Actually. Or PoE, I'm very surprised you're a player too. God damn, dude. We, uh, it's one of the games I used to play a lot many, many, many years ago. So, uh, a couple years back, uh, four years ago, we decided to revisit it and we brought over a bunch of our community. We were about 50 people from our community playing. Um, and, uh, you know, we played for I don't know, half a year or something and then it kind of died out a little bit. But uh, we started going back up now. 
and uh we did we rebooted the accounts again so now we're like i think we're 25 30 people in the guild and another 10 15 people outside of the guild that are playing and uh it, it's so it's so much fun dude so much fun playing off stream every now and then hanging out with the boys it's it's really nice i'm playing d as an rp ak i mean you can just use the bizarre and get another carrot if you want to they're more than welcome to join definitely have room for it we have um a lot of new players a lot of veteran players a lot of returning players uh a lot of people around level 50 ish quite a few at level 100 that are actively playing and a handful of us are level i'm level 200 something so we're just around 200 and i got a couple of people around 3 350 as well having a good fucking time that's all that matters What are you leveling? I'm leveling a blink arrow, mirror arrow build. Mage Spot is very unlikely to exist in uh, PvE 2. Very unlikely, considering how they want to design flasks. But yeah, like I said, Sakrix, uh, if you ever want to join, just uh, tag me in the TBA chat channel in Discord. We'll get you in, man. We're not hardcore gaming or anything like that. Just keep that in mind. We're just chilling and having a good time. So if you ever want to join this, uh, always room. And Headhunter has nothing to do with Flask, though. Nine and a half hours. I mean, it's all about uh, it's all about experience and practice. Speaking of package, I actually want to show you. Morning, Hollow. What are you doing, dude? Eight hundred and twenty hours. Oh, you're still in the tutorial, bro. Jesus Christ. Let me know when you're done with the tutorial, then. All right, let's see. What are we specking? That node. Into uh, tireless. And then we will pick up um, fearsome force. Yes, that's the name of it. And then we'll go for reflexes. Let's go for it. I'm literally just waiting for a response from uh, Ted, my tattoo artist, to confirm everything. And uh, once I get the confirmation from there, I will I will set up a sub goal. I will set up a sub goal. What do you guys think? What do you guys think will be a uh, be a good sub goal to uh, stay above two thousand subs this month? So if we stay above 2,000, then I'd like the sub count uh, counts the subs for the last 30 days, right? So we'll set up a goal to stay above a certain amount of subs uh, at the end of the month. What would be reasonable for this month is 2,000. Because the goal is that I will do a tattoo on my tattoo artist. And I've never held a tattoo pen before. So we'll see how that goes. Because he said several times that he's down for it. I'm just reconfirming with him that he's down for doing it. And then I'll then I'll happily set up a sub goal for it. I'm not I'm not kidding. He, he said several times he's down. I'm just reconfirming with him right now. Waiting for him to respond. What could go wrong? Exactly. What could go wrong? <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be a small one, obviously. It will have to be a small one. Let's not fuck up his life, all right? <laughs> I know. I know. Maybe we'll let chat decide on a small thing. 
I mean, we would probably have to be like on the foot or something, right? Getting the colon three tattoo. SRS. Very bonus, super easy crash on that. SS by lighting, beating prefix, three prefix, and no clean. T for asking, block prefix, veil of chaos, prefix, veil. Pretty much that. Now it's guys, it's a bit of a Block prefix, prefix, pray, pray. Without verifying, that sounds about right. Yes, he was here, tattoo. <laughs> is the foot sore as fuck? It is, but uh, you see, Ted, uh, my tattoo artist, Ted, he's uh, he's a man made of steel. All right, the guy's a giga chad. I I think that I think two thousand would be a reasonable goal, and you gotta keep in mind two thousand is a lot of subs still. It means I have to we have to stay above two thousand subs. We have to stay above 2k subs. And the sub count counts the last 30 days, which means that most of those subs, or almost all of them, is from December month right now. They're gonna go away. Butterfly tattoo on a lower but I have a butterfly tattoo. Actually. I genuinely no cap on a stack have a have a butterfly tattoo. It's true. Not on my lower back though, but I do have I do have a butterfly tattoo. No, not on my lower back now. It's um You gotta keep in mind that the butterfly is uh is literally the stream logo for this uh for my company. And it's actually coming from my old band. Which was uh, back in the day called Haunted by Butterflies, as in the butterfly effects. And yes, we play Metalcore, hence the long name. Hey, let me show you. Right there, on the flag, dudes. The stream logo, boys. Right next to Fairgraves. That's Fairgraves. Yeah, I've got a butterfly right there. Show my panty line. You can oh, you must have entered. You uh, wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm a streamer in a very small room without an AC. You may you refer to a panty line? that will demand or dictate the necessity of there being a panty to begin with. You think I wear underwear when I'm streaming? Wake the fuck up, son. Looks like Fairgraves. It is Fairgraves. I literally have Arakali human form on my left arm, and I have uh, Fair Grace on my right arm. Based on the facial, it is more like a hairline anyway. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> You're not wrong. That's our Kali human form. It's uh, it's it's just our Kali human form is the inspiration to my sleeve tattoo that we have a sub goal for. I'm waiting for a confirmation from my artist at the moment to see what date we're gonna do that. And uh, depending on the confirmation I get, then, um, depending on the confirmation I get, will dictate the sub goal we're going to set up for this month as well. 
Temple Obama wanted to do a low body version without using the specters from this league to see how this will perform in the future leagues. And then once we've confirmed that, we're going to use the specters of this league. That's the plan. Confirm next league, no specters. I'd be very surprised if they included these specters next league. I'd be very, 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 very surprised. I like them with Martin Abama. It's OP as fuck, dude. Like, ridiculously brokenly overpowered. So, yeah, enjoying it is one way to put it. Ugh. Lovely gems, man. No, I definitely don't think that's going to be the new Spectre Brink, but I, you know, one can hope, right? One can hope. Good luck in the farewell. Well, be careful. Yeah, expect to be to your preview. Ah, uh, doubt it. B A and Obama. No, I will be using Ma as well. So this is not going to be a Ba build, and it's not going to be a Ma build. It is going to be a Bama build because I will be using both Ba and Ma. They don't correct me when there's nothing to correct. Prismatic? Yes, sir. Explain, please. I, I just did. What do you want me to explain? Were you just making random sheep sounds? I don't make sheep sounds. I'm the shepherd. Bama. Ba. Ba is blink arrow. Ma is mirror arrow. Normally, this build is nowadays played without the Ma. So you only play with the Ba. But I don't play with the Ba. I want the Ba with me. So I'm gonna do a Ba Ma. No, you don't have to spam. The other ones can have a much longer duration. You put up a Ma for the debuff things. An FF and shit. And then you spam bar. If it'll make it real interesting, you can make some weird sheep sounds. Ba. 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 Should actually, I, I should do like a sound alert or something every time I right click. Just for that. A bar with a bar. Moo, 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 moo. That's a cow. That's not a fucking sheep, dude. Stay in school, kids. Stay in school. In terms about the necro poison bomb, or did I miss, uh, miscalculation? It's not a big fan of the cow, the poison version, no. School these days. 
Yeah. Oh my gas, he had a farm. Yep. That's how it goes. That's exactly how the song goes. Maria Brink, the vocalist in this band. Mm. Fucking amazing voice, dude. Holy shit. There were some zombies. Jesus. Where's the podcast? 21.30 p.m. CET. Three hours and 21 minutes. My favorite band, our voice, dude. Her voice is fucking amazing, dude. It is fabulous. I've heard she pulls, uh, or the band pulls an amazing live show. I've never seen it live. I would love to. Sorry? Sorry for what? Where's the podcast? Nah, it's all good, man. You're not the first or the last person to ask. Don't worry about it. Is it be good live and now every size a wardrobe change? Yeah, I heard someone mention that as well. Still though. This means it's more of a theatrical show. So you don't read my message. Oh, that's not your fault. That's my fault. That's because I'm a... I know, dude. I just can't focus, man. I literally just can't focus. I can be talking about something. Then I'll read chat. I'll be like, yo, completely de derail and go off a rant on someone. And Bill feels like a totem. Your mom is a totem. Uh, you're right though. <laughs> you're right. It does it does feel like a toad. I'm sorry. Keep your eyes you have sharp. To remember humanity needs us. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I normally don't like totem bills, but I do like this one. It it's it, 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 it does feel like a totem bill, you're right. You're right. It does. Someone mentioned that you and DM are going to do a PUE2 dev energy. When is this happening? 21.30 p.m. CET. That's in three hours and 21 minutes. Recent 13. Oh my god, no. No, 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 no. Hem42, where you at, man? Where you at, man? I, di I, didn't, I didn't mean it, dude. I didn't mean it. Let me let me pin this message so people don't miss this. Maybe yeah, just troll it. We're just having a good laugh, man. Just having a good laugh. It's all in good spirits in here, right, boys? See Sabaton again? Oh, I've seen the live so many times, and every fucking time it's been fabulous. Absolutely amazing. Yo, Ham, where you at, man? You, you just stopped responding. You're gonna make me feel bad now. Just a good joke, dude. Where you at, man? Mr. Ham4224, where you at, bro? Just crying in the shower. I don't think so. I don't think so. Hem has been around for a long time in this community, man. 
Hammer has been around for a long time. Let me tell you. I know for a fact that Hammer has been around for a very long time. I must have time to gather my will. He turned off Twitch. There's no shot, dude. There's no way. There's no way. There is no way. Secret guest path the map. No, the, the secret guest has already been revealed. Are you guys not actually like reading the news post that, that literally P reposts themselves? Like if you if you go to the post, the path of exile literally tweeted themselves and the forum thread. They're literally saying that Jonathan Rogers and Mark Roberts will be joining. All right, now I'm getting concerned. Him, where you at, bro? He's not. He's not saying anything. It's making me concerned now. Here, there he is. Okay. We thought you. We thought you ditched me. Welcome. Because of my uncalled for comment. No stressing, sir. I don't know about Jonathan before. Yeah, we announced that it was going to be Mark Roberts uh, yesterday as well. And they posted it on Twitter as well. We thought you ditched me. Um, we got we got concerned, man. And I said, there's no way because you've been around for such a long time in our community that you know that sometimes I um, I pull these on call for jokes. It's uh, I, I just let it slip. I said, let it rip, you know. I seize the opportunities. Get one chance, you know. One chance. Huge with the four months tier one. Thank you so much, man. Would you let it would you let it slip? Or would you seize it? You like jokes me more? Perfect, man. That's what I'm saying, boys. You guys were like hyping shit up in vain. I told you he's fine. To get muted, you. In the chain, then the chain is how to measure the bot, gets to see your guy. Oh, that's all good, man. That's all good, man. Trust me, you're not the first or the last person to ask. Don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it. Why not using a chest? Uh, because chest slows you down. You actually get a movement speed penalty for wearing a body armor. So if I don't wear one, I uh, I will be moving faster. That is the professional answer. The reality is that I've forgotten completely to equip gear on this character. And I didn't even know I wasn't wearing a chest piece. That's the sad reality. Like, I'll be honest, like, this, this build is just so stupid. I mean, I, I'm wearing, like, nothing. I have a Sid Breath equipped, bro. Well, the mana ring does are really that bad. Oh, it's just to help me sustain. I don't think I really need it. I'm just twink leveling this. So Kiki is wanted to upload this to YouTube as a play uh, playthrough video. Even though it is twink gear. I don't even know how much we played. I mean, four hours. We've been kind of chilling. Plus, I've been tabbing out and shit. Do 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 do
Ne, 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 ne. Boom, boom, boom. I want you in my room. Let's not spend the night together. Get the fuck out when we're done. That's how the lyrics goes, right? Hold on. Lyrics. Boom, boom, boom. I want you in my room. Let's spend the night together. From now on till for... And last time I ever listened to that song. The wire 2120 volt jam is expensive. It really due to removal of quality recipe of the price of GCPs. It can't be. Less people uh, running the shit, I guess. Hmm. Venga boys. Come on now, don't go all day. They will be done. A way to run father and son for one by one and dun 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 It's a good song. Feels of Verdun. GCPs are expensive, but you gotta keep in mind that fewer people are running shit like the lab to get the trans gem and then a lot of the little fewer people getting the trans gem if you're referring to a 2120 with like a trans gem, those are expensive because you first gotta get the trans gem then you gotta get that to 20% quality which you have to manually GCP and then you have to level it to 20 and then you can corrupt it Judgment has begun to run father and son fall one by one fields off were done Sabaton is just fucking amazing It's just a great fucking band dude It's funny though. I remember watching them uh, live back at Sweden Rock Fe <laughs> Festival before they got big back when they were signed with a shit label before they got um What's his name? Help me out here. Uh, Peter Tatkin's brother. Nuclear. The, the, the record label? Help me out here. Tatkin's brother. Hypocrisy Pain. The, the guy there. The, his brother. Whatever the fuck his name is. Patrick? It's Nuclear Blast. I, yeah, pretty sure he is. But whatever. You know what I'm talking about. So they he signed him and then Peter Tatkin's will help me out every now and then. And uh, getting, them, um, getting them out there. It's pretty cool. And then they did, obviously, like everyone else does, uh, just a remaster of the songs they released with the previous album so they can reclaim the, the rights to their songs. That's why you had uh, 2010, uh, the uh, rearmed album, with songs from 2004 and 2006. Speaking of which, let's find that. Uh, I'm going to find some old songs from Sabaton. Hold on. Uh, Art of War remaster, is that the one I'm thinking about? Hold on, hold on. Sabaton Primo Victoria. Uh, what is this? Rearm Primo Victoria 2010. Reign of Terror. Is that the one I'm thinking about? No. I am thinking about Wolfpack. Panzer Battalion. Into the Fire. Oh, these are fucking bangers, dude. And Primo Victoria is amazing as well for that matter. Whew. Get a new copyright? No, not new copyright, but they can stop playing there. Well, the car is back, they're already owning them. No, but what they could do is they can release like things on Spotify with their new stuff instead of their old stuff with a remaster that they actually have the rights for. That's what they can do with it. Oh, I gotta change the battery headset. Give me a second. These are like two, three P each. That's crazy. Basically, with a remaster, is that they can then release their stuff with a new album and get the payments for that without paying the old album, the, the old record label, which has the old versions of it. That's the benefits of doing the remasters. 
That's what they've done. Oh. Above the surface, it seems quiet and calm. No! And the right, they already get the money for them playing, even though they were made on the old label, or they might have felt the new label had a better sound technician and could have helped the song sound better. That's not entirely how it goes, Kaka. It's the old record label that basically their initial initial introductions. You, you have their initial introductions to the shit, they take so much fucking money from them, it's kinda crazy. It's usually how it goes with the record labels. To get them out there and get their name out. Take a stupid amount of money from them, which includes royalties and shit like that. Depending on how their contract looks. So by them remastering, they can get rid of the uh, payment thresholds or the contracts that they have on those songs and have the new contract that they have with the new label for the remaster versions instead. That's why they do it. It's not, it's not like reclaiming the copyright, it's just that the contract that they're getting paid off from their old songs is horrible. It's a Taylor Swift method. I mean, Taylor Swift is far from the first person to have done it. But yes, she's doing the exact same thing. Exactly the same thing. A lot of bands are doing it. Like, the thing is, a lot of bands get their initial record label signing just to get their name out there, get some tours, and they get very bad pay for it, and the record label makes a fuckload of money doing it. And then if the band goes, if the, the band goes uh, well and they blow up, most of them wants to do remasters after popular songs because of the fact that they get a very poor pay of their con of the content that they have with their initial record label. So they do it less for the sound and more so to actually co recollect a better payment from them. Which is just smart business. You know, uh, anything about the, the gems? Am I the confused one? What gems? You buying random gems from me and I don't know why I have a gem tab set to 50c as a dump and people buy like one level 19 quality discipline. Uh, probably because GCPs are super expensive. So I don't know. This song is so good, though. Oh, outside of like Prima Victoria from this album, this is so good. In the wrong track came the wolf pack. You get a scoop on the GG interview tonight, or will sister and the others also have interviews with the PUE2 devs? I have not heard about anyone else having interviews outside of me and Kriparian, or me, DM, and Kriparian. Crip had Jonathan Rogers uh, the same week we were going to do it, and um, schedule-wise, it was better for us to postpone ours, so Crip did it first, and then we are doing it today. I haven't heard of anyone else doing it. This is something we've been prepping for quite some time already. Counter Strike is already queued in the in the list, by the way. I mean, another thing um, to keep in mind is um, with the quality gems is like if there's a uh, trans gems and stuff like that versus of it. Yo, Baran, I didn't see you there. The Swedish weather rally does is better. I don't know about that. How you doing, Baran? I good to see you, man. Hope you're doing well, bro. What is Rise doing this podcast? I think he mentioned it will have it soon. I have no idea. I haven't heard of it. I haven't heard of anyone else doing it, so I don't know. I am not sure. Podcast is gonna be fun. It's gonna be good shit. 
All right, wait, which act are we in? We're in Act 9 already, and I still haven't equipped the chest piece because I kind of forgot. The reason I wrote it, I wrote it because you said reclaim the rights. Well, I guess I felt like that was the best way to describe it. I mean, without going into detail, which is what I, oh, which I actually felt like I had to do eventually. But just try to avoid having a long discussion about it. That's all it was, Kaka. I pay the old label and the old signs of play so though yes so basically just to just to further explain what i was talking about is that the old label normally the first record label a band gets is horrible mostly sold to the comp to the bands as a way to get their names out what then happens is that they charge stupid money on all the royalties and stuff like that and they they make stupidly good money it's crazy how much those record labels make and it's a good way for, in some cases, it's a good, good, good sometimes way for bands to get their names out there. And then if the band goes well, they blew up or whatever, what they want to do is with a new record label that's giving them a much better contract, they will then remaster their songs, which basically just makes them take away any sort of public space where their old songs were playing, where the, the old record label is making a fuckload of money from them. They're now playing the remastered version, which is instead handled by the new record label, which is paying them a significantly better amount of, uh, better money from those. That's basically how it does. And it's not uncommon for uh, for the initial contract to take a portion of the, um, uh, if not an entirety of the ownership of uh, royalties and then getting paid. Uh, a, uh, a certain fee after that which are horrible contracts which should be stayed away from but it's also initially a very good way to get their names out there but normally what would happen is that you want to get the fuck out of those contracts as soon as you can and that's basically what Sabaton did between 2004 and 2010 so what then happened is that 2010 with Petatak well, sorry whatever his name is Petatak and his brother uh, with Nuclear Blast went ahead and did well actually from 2009 to 2010 did the remastering of their in 2004 album so that they could basically set those out on things like spotify and whatnot to the public forums so that people were playing the new record well their new signed content with the new record labels actual release masters rather than their old record label that's the that's the detailed description of what i was trying to say i figured it was easy to just say that just reclaim the rights because essentially that's what they did right because my understanding was that they didn't own the royalties on the uh, on the old album songs, but I might be wrong on that one. That's just an assumption. Knowing that album, no, 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 not album. Knowing that specific record label. This ghastly nightmare. Because they've done that many times. Oh yeah, I still have it ascended. I kind of, I kind of ignored it. I didn't feel like doing it. <laughs> oh, and I'm on a four link. I just didn't feel like equipping a body armor, ascend, or get more links. Uh, new build? Yeah. Now, Previ, Previ is uh, making me do this. He showed me, uh, he showed me the lights. And I can't look back. I can't look away, man. I can't look away. Yeah, I've listened to Sabaton since about 2000 and... Yeah, about 2006, something like that. They played a lot at Sweden Rock Festival every goddamn year. Am I SRS? Yes, I did, and the bill is dug it Oh, shit. Oh, speaking of which, I, I gotta send uh, Kikis a question. Give me a second. Um...
Come to the unknown. Barely landed in the jungle. Sent on first patrol. Have you guys heard like their initial songs? Like Longa Bola Up Bank and shit like that? I think it's on Spotify actually. Okay, if you uh, go for go for music, yeah. Have you seen Sabaton Live? Uh nine times I think. Ten maybe. It's the only band I've seen that is close to the amount of times I've seen Rammstein live. And Rammstein I've seen 11 or 12 times now. <laughs> My older siblings, they work as uh, bar managers on Sweden Rock Festival. So I used to go there every year for many, many, many years. So I used to go there so I could go backstage with the boys and uh, meet the bands and whatnot. That was good shit, though. That was really good shit. Fuck me. You return for freedom. That's good shit. I've had a couple of beers with Deep Purple. That's pretty fucking cool. And Twisted Sister, actually. That's even cooler. Fucking amazing people. Those good times. <laughs> Deep, did you take the purple? I uh, know, but there was a lot of smoke on the water that night. Um, Dimmu Borgir was really cool live. The drummer, uh, fucking diva. He's a fucking cunt. But... D. Snyder, amazing. He's fucking... He's so funny. Uh, but... The drummer in Demon Borgir is a fucking cunt. The bass player... Uh, I don't know his real name. His name is... Uh, he's called uh, Vortex. The, pre, the former opera singer. Holy fuck me. Whew. The dude has the voice of a fucking angel. And he is so down to earth and so humble. One of the best, like one of the most ex uh, wholesome experience I've had with meeting people backstage. They're good live. Oh yeah. Skid Row singer. I, dude. I was there. Um, I, that was two thousand and. Fuck it. What was it? Two thousand and nineteen or something. Twenty twenty. No. I was helping my brother at the bar a couple years ago. I saw Kiss live. I did not get to see them backstage. And uh, Skid Row was there. And I was looking so much to actually meeting them backstage. And I missed them. I missed the Skid Row. I was supposed to meet them backstage, but I missed them. So I never got to see them. Brothers of Metal? No, I haven't done that now. I haven't met that many. Like a handful of bands. Some of them I literally made sure I got to see. Like they were Borg, you Deep Purple, Twist Assist. That was really cool. Um, Sabaton, of course, and stuff like that. But it's like Skid Row. I think is fucking amazing. But I wanted to meet them and um, have a few beers with them. But I missed them. And that must have, that was last time I was helping them at the bar. That was, I think it was around 2019. I think it was 2019. By the way, I missed them though. I really wanted to, but I missed them. Uh, what am I specking? Crit? Are we going crit now? We don't really need more damage. I don't really need more defenses either. So fuck it. 
to the hell. As we make our way to heaven. Sorry, Syndicate. Well, Sonic Syndicate's lead vocalists uh, actually did this with a friends of mine band. Let's see if I can find the. This is from Sonic Syndicate's vocalists. Actually, hold on, hold on. I, I gotta, I gotta do this. So. The first version is with Sonic Syndicate's vocalists, and the second version is with my friend. That's pretty cool, actually, yeah. I had no idea about that, actually. Uh, let me, let me get, it's after this song, actually. Yeah, after this song, you'll hear, uh, Sonic Syndicate doing the vocals for a Friends of Mine band, and then they scrapped that, and they brought, uh, another friend of mine in to, uh, to do, uh, do the vocals instead, which is significantly better, in my opinion. Wait, my stream is the only one that you have to load all the time? I'm not sure what's causing that. No idea. That's weird. How would that only happen on my stream, man? Six days of fire, one day of rest. This is such a good fucking song, though. Fuck no. I even forgot about this one. Good call, by the way. Did this start recently, or is it the new, like, or, or is it something that's been happening all the time? This entire album is amazing. Yeah, this entire album is fan fucking tastic. Oh Jesus Christ! Maybe I should equip that body armor or ascend. <laughs> you know, one of the two would do. Why you've been having You've been having that same issue as well? I have zero drop frames on the stream, so it shouldn't be on my end. Twitch servers or on your end. So I don't know. I genuinely don't know what's costing it. Are there more people having that same issue? What the fuck? Had the same issue in other streams? Okay, so it's not just my stream then, because you made it sound like it's only my stream. Fucking hell, boys. Don't scare me like that. You guys said it was only on my stream. I mean, we're in Act 10. I haven't ascended. I don't wear a body armor. I'm on a four link. All right, so this next song is by Sonic Syndicate, one of the vocalists here, right? Lead vocalist, all right? And uh, my friend's band, and just listen to it.
Now, I don't mind this his voice in Sonic Syndicate. I can't stand it in this song. I, I, I cannot make out what he's singing. Like, the only reason I know what he's singing is because I know the lyrics. So anyways, I'm going to play the same song, but with my friends doing the vocals instead, which he, he is the main, he is the lead vocalist for the band now. Again, you used to be with him in the past as well. This is how it really should sound. Little better, right? This it, like the difference. So this is a friend of mine, but good shit. Yeah, you can check out Previ on YouTube. He has everything you'll need there. Kick out the metal in general. Yeah, this song is so fucking good, though. So good. So I queue up some more from uh, uh, Faithful Darkness. It's a local band, friends of mine. Doing two massive build for the Spectre, you're suggesting that one turret guarding the Spectre, multiple perfect looking, there was the best option. Now, I would only use the uh, the turtle for uh, lower budget initial stage. You would want to replace that and run your own uh, determination later on the way. It's so mostly a matter of personal preference. You wouldn't want to stack a bunch of Hulk creations. If you use one, you would only use one for the buff that is. But it always comes down to a matter of personal preference with the Spectres. The regular ones always works. Make sure you never remove the Primal Crush Claw, though. That guy's too big to, uh, to uh, remove. Actually, so... The guy that produced these songs for Faithful Darkness and uh, he played rhythm guitar for them uh, was uh, the very first drummer and co-founder of uh, Soilwork. They're from the same town as I live in, uh, Jimmy. And uh, he also made, uh, produced uh, my, old, my For Old Bands uh, single uh, that we have on YouTube, actually. So I was thinking I'm going to play you guys that song. So, founder of Soil Work produced this song from my old band. I made the lyrics and I'm the one growling. Enjoy.
ship. Yeah, let's head back. Any of Mystic Singer? I do not know. Rowley boy. This is uh, 10 years ago now. Glory Hammer Singer, that's pretty cool. Back to uh, singing sometimes. That'd be fun. Eh. Singing stream. Well, this is me growling. My old band 10 years ago. Yeah, no, we might, uh, but it's still good. Nice work. The canals. Good memory stuff. Playing with the band. the finish line boys non ascended no body armor because fuck it we don't need it <laughs> i'm just too lazy just way too lazy that was my old band with me growling enjoyed that don't play that very often GG's ever going to actually take a stance that the drop rares are awful versus a trader burn some or require third party burn to engage with efficiency spectrum. I think they've already made countermeasures to try to counter this in a somewhat of an effective way with the uh, uh, loot having a uh, generic better drop uh, system that they're doing. It are, it's small steps in the right direction. Will they ever solve it? Fuck no, I don't think that will ever happen. Are they countermeasuring it or taking it in, in, into consideration and are considering it when they implement changes? Absolutely. Absolutely. They always do that. Have they been good at it? No, probably not. I don't think anyone can say that. But they definitely are taking it into consideration and they are tackling it at a consistent basis. I just don't think that they will ever succeed in making it good. PoE2 is a um, clean slate to work on. 
if that makes any sense. How should I go about trading my mirror for a divine? Do I just trust you as a service? I never had this issue before. What do you mean? What do you mean? May a new dawn arise. How do you mean? There's too many divs from my window. What do you mean? It's 690 divs. Six at max, ten stacks, twelve rows. It's a I'm gonna show you. There are two ways to do it. So there are two ways to do it. One is to take the ninety divs and just trust. Well, actually, there are three solutions. The other part is to take part of the payment in form of other currencies that's worth more, like an apothecary, um, mirror shards, um, house of mirrors, whatever, right? The other solution is to do this. Boom. Here's another couple of rows to utilize. Use them. To receive it. I just wish when you traded someone that this window would pop up with a trade. That's what I would like to see. And have a trade though. I realized as I was loading into the character. <laughs> uh, but no, you have two choices. You either trust or you have a middleman or you um, uh, take part of the payment as a, a card or a mirror shard or whatever. It, it doesn't matter because that doesn't show up on the trade window. Anyways, uh, so I know we were chilling, you know, a little bit of AFK time, five hours, kind of bad. So I just want to point out that we just leveled using the Blink Arrow uh, Bombarding Clones. First off, I failed in the start because I used Ruthless and added Lightning whilst I was using a Sid Breath. Very expensive, by the way, but it makes them deal none, no cold damage, right? They can't do anything but cold damage. Uh, here is Bite. That's a vendor recipe. I had minion damage. I had a two link early on. Then I, when I finally realized what I've done, then I added damage with elemental damage and fresh meat from level 18. And uh, just some generic bullshit. I had this with like trash on it. I didn't even have the, this at the start. Generic gold room. Seven least stop. And in the currently, I did use this. Uh, I forgot to add a chest piece. Someone reminded me about this and asked why I wasn't wearing a chest piece around Act 8. Uh, obviously, it is to avoid the 3% reduced movement speed. Um, but in reality, I just forgot uh, to equip a chest. And uh, I also forgot to ascend on a Guardian, which is the most broken class in the game to ascend with. Because normally, with your level of Guardianist, you get the first Ascendancy node. And then you are shield charging and convocating, and the Guardian, the flame guy, will just kill everything. So instead of leveling that way, I just I just ignored and forgot to ascend because all I did was this. I, I ran and then I cast my fucking blink arrow and everything just died. Because I never stopped to level extra anywhere, and we're level 65 and a half. <laughs> no ascendancy, but we did all the side quest, I believe. Let me double check. Um, which nodes do we do? We we can do that. All right. So let's see. Did I get all the passives? Oh my god, the maroon mariner. Wait, which one is that? Oh, I never took the skill point for fair grace. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. Here we go. We did all the skill points as well. See this? Boom. 
24. We're done. We did all the skip. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, we shouldn't take the jewel, though. We should do this. Anyways, that's that's the playthrough with uh, Blink Arrow of Bombarding Clones. Again, a big shout out to Previ for the awesome work he's doing in this. We'll be playtesting this on stream with some low body shenanigans, so we'll see how it goes. Don't forget to leave a like button, subscribe for more content, and leave a comment down below what you guys think of the build, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. So till then, stay safe and keep rocking.